Hi guys, and welcome to Roll for Damage. I hope you all enjoyed our, our little uh, animations and things we had set up for you. <laughs> this is the third episode of The Scales Above, our Rise of Tiamat adjacent campaign. Before I introduce you to our uh, lovely players, I think I'll say thank you to a few people, starting with Brepi, who has done our amazing art, as you can see on the screen right now. I think it is uh, Soaring Leaf on the Wind. Our, the art's a bit of a lie right now, because he only has one arm. Uh, but she didn't know that at the time of her drawing. So thanks anyway, Brie. Sorry. Uh, who else have I got to thank? Thank you very much to Hero Forge for sponsoring us. Uh, once again, you saw the ad. Uh, they recently have come and released... Uh, my brain is just not doing good at the morning words thing. Thank you very much for sponsoring us. Thank you for bringing out your uh, Hero Forge 2.0 with a color and uh, token creator. It's been, been awesome. Finally have finished the videos and are uploading them as soon as this is over. We have them for all of our players creating their characters in it. It's uh, really, really awesome. You should check it out. Also, thank you to, you know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna just scroll down a second here. There we go. Thank you to Dungeon Fog, a, a amazing map making tool. I'm actually gonna have one of their maps uh, up today that I made this week. Really, really uh, cool thing. You can change all the lighting and they've got just heaps and heaps of assets to use. So again, you can check that out. They have their project Deos coming out in a few days. I'll get producer Vej to drop that in the chat. So uh, yeah, once again, thank you very much. Right, so I'm gonna go through and call everyone here to say hi. Quick little thing about yourself, who you're playing, starting with Auric. Hello, everybody. Uh, I am Sean from Paradise RPG. Uh, happy to be here, as always. Excited to play a little bit more with my uh, space cadet wizard, uh, Auric Solaris, who tends to forget when others are in the room when he's experimenting. But uh, excited to be here. Um, I'm the DM over at Paradise RPG. I'm sure Shannon will tell you a little bit more about us. All right. Next along, we have age number one. Hello, hello. I'm agent number one, or Karen. Uh, I'm part of the Roll for Damage crew, as well as the Wonders and Blunders crew, which is a fifth edition podcast that I'll leave Mike to tell us more about. Uh, I also have my own Twitch channel where I stream, and you can catch me over there Mondays and Fridays uh, with some more uh, evenings being added in the coming week. All right, next along we have Whistle. Hi, my name is Whistle or Shelby. I'm from the channel Whistle While You Work, a channel where I tell stories of my D&D antics while drawing whatever fun fantasy stuff comes to mind. Uh, and I'll be playing Little Miss Nia, who is our sweet, slightly unexpected little little mage. Mm. Mm. I'll leave that there. Uh, returning this week, we have Shannon. That's me. Hi, everybody. I'm so happy to be back. I missed you guys last week. Um, I am Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at sroby25. Um, I am also from Paradise RPG. I am a player over there. I play my rogue Scarlet. Um, I am also one half of the Tim and Shannon Power Hour, where we speculate on our story and we talk with awesome members of the community. Thursdays, we have um, Sean's stream, Relaxing in Paradise, where he crafts and does uh, maps and drops some lore and plays some video games. It's a lot of fun. Tomorrow, Saturday at 10 a.m., so almost 12 hours from now, um, we are launching our very new stream, very new, brand new stream, um, One Shots in Paradise. And our um, our own Stefan will be DMing with some amazing people from the D&D community. So if you are around at 10 a.m. tomorrow, 10 a.m. Eastern, um, go check them out. All right. And... Last but not least, uh, there is Mike Buddy. Fuzz. Uh, hi, I'm Mike. I play uh, Leaf, and I'm also the DM of the Wonders of Blunders podcast, which is kind of a horror comedy family style D&D podcast. Uh, you can find us on Twitter at Wonder and Blunder or wonderandblunder.com. 
Uh, we're Patreon slash Wonder and Blunder. You can check that out too if you, if you wanted to. You had a spare dime, you could toss our way for meals. Uh, <laughs> and that that's 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 the only place that you can find me. I'm not I'm not online. I'm here and I'm there. That's it. You burn your credit cards, buy gold. I I, I like the. Uh you know for, for meals makes it sound like that's not actually a room you're sitting in it's just a green screen in like a cardboard box in an alley <laughs> it's like please please i need food i have um, a t-shirt to make it more convincing but i'm freezing yeah. uh okay so since since uh leaf is our illustrious leader of this this fine crew of ruffians uh could you possibly give us the recap of what happened last week this week, I think I actually can, because we spent the whole time on a boat. So I should be able to remember everything that happened, right? Uh, you look doubtful, Kieran, but I can do this. I can. Uh, we met. I thought you were uh, gonna pass it to Shannon. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, we met a nice elf named Yako, uh, and who has a magic boat, and agreed to take us to Duskfall in exchange for stories related to why we are all going to Duskfall. Uh, so we all got on board, we got ready, we had some dinner, uh, realized that our friend Bob was still with us uh, and made a blood promise to, when we arrived in Duskfall, get him a new tavern and get him set up in his brand new life uh, on page one of the story, the new story of Bob. Uh, so number one priority coming up is going to be getting Bob a new tavern. Uh, we then went to dinner with Yako, and uh, we had some some stories were exchanged. We found out uh, a little bit more about why everyone was going to Duskfall, whether it was uh, Saros's quest from his god, um, Auric looking for, I believe, more powerful magic users to experiment on. <laughs> or maybe I'm just filling sure. in blanks that weren't there. <laughs> you can always just assume he's looking for magic. <laughs> uh, Nia was looking for her lost friend, um, who everybody seems to be convinced is dead except for Nia. Um, so we're hoping to, to track him down there as well. Uh, and Leaf is looking for a way to solve an old problem uh, with some powerful magic. Uh, we had that dinner we rested we had uh yeah a lot of a lot of uh, back and forth conversations we talked about uh magic and its use we learned about the council that is going to be having a meeting in duskfall about the cult of the dragon um so we we learned that there are a bunch of high level people on this council who are going to be discussing how these next plans go but we wanted to get more information uh so after passing around a bunch of plans, we decided that not the best plan, but the plan that we're going with is to non-magically break into the council meeting, spy on it, uh, and get the information that we need that way. Uh, potentially uh, using the services of Rhea Nightshade, who is one of the people yeah. who will be sitting on the council. Um, and who is almost certainly going to lock us into some sort of binding criminal contract. Uh, so we pulled in, we saw the Slayers in uh, in Duskfall who kill or, or beat the crap out of and then throw in jail people who use magic and aren't registered. Um, and now we're going to try to find Yako again at the Leaky Barrel where he's going to help set up that meeting with Rhea. Did I get everything? pretty pretty on point does that all just off your memory or you actually have notes uh i don't have any my notes are i had Rhea nightshade's name written down <laughs> okay. well it's rianne so so oh. if that's the only note you took, <laughs> never taking notes you again wrong. i'm never taking um, notes again just go correct my notes hold on <laughs> yeah, have to, Ryan, i had it right real is it yeah. r-i-a-n or r-i-o-n R-I-A-N. Rihanna. 
All right. Um, the only name I got right from last week. So, <laughs> you guys had just got to the dock. You were looking down at the sort of the, uh, the port area. You had that man getting brutalized to your right for being a magic user, just having walked off a ship. And to your left were the uh, big fighting pits, a raised sort of area with pavilions. It looked like there's lawyers and judges there as well. Uh, it seems to be a very official place to settle disputes, along with the place to just uh, let off some steam. As you guys are looking at that, yes? I just want to clarify, do you just get in trouble for being a magic user here or being an unsanctioned one? Because I thought there was like a sanctioning process. You get in trouble for being an unsanctioned one? Okay. We all are. Yeah. So, uh, the as you're sitting there looking at this uh, new city you find yourself in, Yako had walked past you saying, I'm heading off to the Leaky Barrel and I'll be seeing you later, leaving you all to your own devices. So, Leaf, as you step foot upon the uh, the grounds of Dustfall proper off of the the walkway leading from the ship. What do you do? Uh, well, uh, I, I suppose we should try and keep this as as quick as possible. Uh, try to cut down the amount of time it takes before one of us catches, you know, gets us all thrown in jail. Uh, so let's try to stay together and keep things quiet. Sound good? Mm-hmm. What is Reasonable. the plan again? I don't, I don't, I, I wasn't listening. Well, uh, I believe, and then kind of like looking around <laughs> and leaning in a little bit, um, I believe we are going to break into this council meeting. Oh. Uh, with the with the help of uh, a contact that Yakko is going to put us in touch with uh, once we get over to the Leaky Barrel. Okay. And to it? be honest, I wouldn't be super opposed to all of us heading over there and, you know, just uh, having a nice quiet meal. But uh, I'm not your mom. No reason to draw attention. <laughs> As you are sort of uh, talking at the bottom of this this uh, gangplank, you see a pair of very large, well-muscled humans walking past. One male, one female. They are adorned with tattoos. One has a shield and long sword and the other has a very very large battle axe and they're sort of patrolling the area looking out they um sort of their eyes sort of stop and look towards these new arrivals and they say nothing as they kind of walk up look you up and down sort of like almost like uh sniffer dogs they're just like around you looking up and down one of them grunts and they just walk away because someone had the forethought to use a spell that stops people detecting magic (laughs) i suppose suppose we should not stay out in the open too long as we discuss these things shall we head to this leaky barrel yeah i think it's a good idea to not stick around here Uh, for people's reference uh Boric does not look his usual ostentatious self. He has got very simple, the just the underclothes of that lo- that large decorated cloak he has. He just has a simple tunic, rope belt. Um, he has his spell book kind of wrapped a little bit within that belt so that you can't really see the intricacies of it. His hair is held back in a tie. He looks very much just like a very plain, simple, I mean, other than his you know, pink hair and all that fun stuff, but he just looks like a simple, student or monk of some kind. Very uh, non-ostentatious. Uh, 
Okay, so you're all making your way to the Leaky Barrow? Yep. yep. Yeah. Okay. Yes, sir. So, you, from the gameplay, you turn left, you walk past the fighting pits, seeing that there's probably a good five or six hundred people gathered around. Um, there's a line to either side of the arena, and there is a, on the back of it, that race pavilion, is another open area where it looks like people are uh, presenting minor cases of, of things. You can see right now two farmers are arguing with a judge about, you know, one's taking the other person's land. It's just going back and forward and people are deciding uh, how best to settle the dispute. Moving past that, so turning into the city more and you realize you have no real idea where the leaky barrel is. You're just kind of wondering. Are you happy just to wander the streets? Can I make a history check? Because I've been in Duskfall before. Yep, you can make a history check. You are from a area south of Duskfall. Yeah. So you might have been through it, but I don't think you're a city person, are you? Uh, not particularly. But I did roll the 19. <laughs> okay, so you remember that the last time you came through here, uh, there was a few places recommended for you to stay. The... Leaky Barrel sits right on the border between the trade district and the port area. So you kind of can head towards it. And the trade district's always been able to be told because there's a uh, large sort of like... Uh, the the master uh, of the of this college here, the magical college, Heberum, has is a bit of a traditional wizard and he took the whole I'm gonna have a tower and make it the biggest tower in the city and he just has this massive massive tower sitting so whenever you're in the city if you look for that which stands taller than any other building you'll be able to find the trade district so you can follow that way and find it Will we uh make our way to the edge of the trade district uh, I can't remember exactly where it is but uh uh, I, I got a rough layout of the city still in my mind. How long has it been since you were last here? Oof, jeez, I mean, Leaf and I have been on the road for a number of years now. I, I'd say probably six or seven years, probably, since I last came through. Hmm. I try to avoid the cities as much as I can, but... Well, you know, you gotta catch a boat sometimes. It's probably enough time for all the wanted posters to have rotted away, hey? And kind of nudge them. Or in time for the, brand new ones. Not the wanted posters here I'm worried about. Uh, and I, you know, I kind of eye over to uh, uh, probably a group of slayers and everything passing by. We are best to keep a low profile in this town. Nia's trying her best, but she's scared. Sloan hunches a little bit. <laughs> Almost to accentuate your point, uh, there's the distinct sound of a fiery explosion, maybe four or five streets deeper into the city from where you are right now, which is kind of halfway to your destination of the trade district. And you see uh, people start looking like worried left to right and moving away from it while a couple guardsmen run and then just coming in at a full sprint uh, is is the two slayers that you saw earlier. They come running through the streets and angling off in that direction. And pretty soon after that fire explosion, there is a few smaller sounds of like a... Usually it's a sort of like fiery impacts, the clanging of metal, things like that, as someone's casting several fire spells and getting to the Vermelo over that way. Let's try not to do that. Yeah, that's a, that's a pretty good example of what not to do, I think. Someone else oh, is making so. the distraction for us. Shall we move on to the tavern? Yeah, yeah, can, can we go? <laughs> Or else am I low enough? 
Yeah, yeah, you should be. You should be fine about there. Okay. You. You are drawing a few glances uh, <laughs> as the very large lady is now <laughs> stooped uh, quite low. Uh, and it's, it's just more people thinking that the. The northerners are a bit odd. I, th- I think we'd get a bit of a chuckle from that, and and, and you know, uh, even though it draws a bit of attention, it's it's drawing a different kind of attention than the kind that we're trying to avoid. So, uh, yeah, yeah. As you approach the trade district, you can see the tower ahead of you, and you sort of turn into a street, and the tower is framed either side of the buildings. And you just see that the buildings sort of end. At a certain point, you see that the buildings here are all shops that are long abandoned and damaged. The boards are blackened by fire and that there are a ring of fleeing petrified bodies trying to run away from where this massive crater is where the trade district used to be. It's about 50 feet deep and 600 feet wide. On the far side of it, the mage tower stands just on the edge, sort of the the foundations have sagged a touch and it's slightly leaning towards the crater. You can see that there is a man standing on one of the balconies of the tower just sort of overlooking this crater and the rest of the city. Not a great place for a tavern. Well, uh, I mean, this, that probably a lot of the competition might have used to be in this crater, so uh, might be one of the only spots left to drink. That's horrible. Yeah. Bobby Boy needs to set up shop somewhere. It seems there's lots of real estate available. As you move around the outside of the crater, uh, you can see that the leaky barrel is one of the only refurbished buildings at the crater's edge. Uh, But it's left sort of the front of it uh, blackened and slightly damaged from, from where whatever happened here happened to this building but they've rebuilt an inner wall to protect the elements. It's kind of where it gets its name. Weren't we told what happened here? Like a tiefling got mad or something? Mm -hmm. I think that's what Yako said. Yes. But I think that that might not give you enough explanation to for Crater. But yes, a tiefling (laughs) got mad here or something. (laughs) Um, I'm sure he doesn't make fun of me. It's easy. Um, The... (laughs) The leaky barrel stands stands there. Uh, there's a low murmur inside. You can smell uh, the food sort of, you know, wafting out of it, like roast meats and stuff. It is it is sort of uh, mid morning, heading towards lunch. Which I could do. I think we just head right on over and yeah. yeah. Do, I, do I smell anything sweet? No, you don't. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll find a confectionery here eventually, probably. So with Saros leading the way, because you're the one that knows the city, you sort of walk in to Leaky Barrel. It's a cozy tavern with a fire in the corner. Um, there's sort of the, the mid-morning rushes started up, and you can see, like I said, those roasting meats. Uh, Yako is sitting in the corner and waves you over. You all found the place, okay. Um, are you staying for a drink? I hadn't met my person yet. My acquaintance is uh, on the way. They usually give it a few hours from when I dock here. Leaf said something about wanting to get food. Oh, well. Yeah. Take or so seat. stay out of trouble, we figure it might be easier to stay out of the prying eyes from uh, inside a dark tavern. Fair enough. Um, I'm meeting a friend called Harding. He's a nice sort uh, for, you know, vast criminal enterprise. But 
I found that he can get the job done. He's usually uh, fairly punctual. Should be 30 minutes or so, I'd hope. Are we going to continue our conversation from dinner last out, night? Out of the way, if you'd prefer to meet him discreetly or... Um, well, I, he should be fine. I'm going to send him to talk to you anyway, so you might as well meet you all. Um, you know what? Uh, Lady Slow, is it? Oh, sorry, don't know the honorific. But you weren't really uh, talkative last night at dinner, and all these fine people told me why they are traveling, and you didn't say a thing. Well, that's hungry. because I was I was sleeping. Mm. Mm-hmm. Well, do you want to fill me in? Why are you traveling to Dust Hall? What are you doing here? Just looking for new sites to see. I've never been this far south before. There's no other reason for you to travel but the sites. Yes. Everyone else had such interesting stories. I think that's interesting. Well... Hmm... Sloan and I have been companions for a while in our travels, and I can assure you that is truly what she seems to seek. Exploration. New things. Where did you meet? Oh. Well, uh, we met by a riverside. Well, it's the nature of things. I was on the riverside. I arguably was by the riverside. Just happened to be not on the riverside. And upside down. You. you, I'm going to need some more explanation here. (laughs) I sort of waves over the bartender. (laughs) Uh, and just, you know, holds up hand round. So, after a moment, you all have drinks in front of you. He's waiting for this story. Well, you see, at times when you are studying in depth and distracted in your travels and less concerned with the uh, environment around you, you may grow distracted and I may have slipped into an old hunter's trap and spent some time hanging by my leg from a tree. That happened. It didn't may happen. It did happen. That's where I found you. And well, I... a rabbit snare? I was reading. And I I, I wanted to read by the facade. As I am wont to do. I have seen you snap people out of this reality, and you got caught by a rabbit trap. I was only in it for about three or four weeks. How did you survive in it that long? Oh, well, I've. Yes, you're the powerful wizard. How. I've been worried about you. How did you not get yourself out of that? It he was, was less not paying about getting attention. My, was less, exactly. It was less about getting myself out and more an opportunity to uh, read by the no, riverside. No, no, no. I mean, how did the blood not all, like, rush to your head and, like, your head explode or something? Can it do that? I, my brother used to tell me that that could happen. I don't know. I've never tried it. Unfortunately not. <laughs> oh, well, you see. Well, he couldn't get down because the, and lowering her voice, because she know that uh, Auric hit it specifically. His book, uh, it, it was out of his reach and he could, could not do anything. And that is I... when I showed up. Okay, but what were you doing alone by a riverside, just hunting for wayward wizards? No. I don't remember. Interesting. I like all of you. You've really 
Oh, well, interesting, yes. Hmm. I will... I'll get Harding to talk to you. Uh, he's standing in the corner, and you sort of look over, and there's this uh, small man sort of, like, just looking at, um... at Yako, like, expectantly. He's like, just... And he sort of walks over, leaves you with your drinks for a moment, and takes Harding outside. Uh, you guys can chat for a few while he's away. Sloan's looking very confused, like her brow is furrowed, like she's trying really hard to remember, but she can't remember. Sloan, are you okay? I, I, I don't remember. That is strange. I usually remember things, but that I do, I don't know how I got to the riverside. Maybe you hit your head? Were you injured? Was I injured? Who knows? She seemed rather intact. I don't think, when she I found don't me. think so. Do you? This did the you first like time the... you've tried to remember this? Well, we. It's the first time that we've talked about how we met before, so it's the first time that I've thought about it in a while. So, did you? Did you wake up at the river, or do you just not remember how you got to the river? Sloane, can I get you to make a wisdom save, please? Sure. Oh no, Sloane, I'm sorry. <laughs> how dare you! It's, it's Nia's fault. Blame Nia. <laughs> oh, it's my fault. I get it. This warm, comforting sensation just sort of like moves sort of like up your neck, over your head, and you sort of get a little bit sleepy for a second. And you just get this feeling like this conversation is important. You'd much rather be spending some of your aggression in the fighting pits. Oh, I don't, I, I, I don't want to talk about it right now. Oh, uh, okay. It hurts to think about. I'm sorry. I would love to talk more about this snare trap that outwitted our mad mage. <laughs> yeah, have I can't believe have, I was worried about you. Have none of you spent several weeks in a single location that you may or may not have been stuck in? Uh, yes. Yeah. But I never but got stuck in a trap, except for that one time. To get me there. Hey, well, so, I could have gotten myself out of it, but I figured it was a good, good opportunity to think and. Luckily, I didn't get myself out of there, otherwise I would not have met Miss Sloane here. Still, that's a long time to be stuck somewhere. Is it? As you guys are having this conversation, uh, the short man wanders back in over to the table. Uh, he's wearing a purple cotton shirt, black pants, and has this deep purple cloak pulled around him for warmth. He's got a shock of jet black hair, so you have a very, very pale face with a deep-set ice blue eyes and uneven smile. I was told that you wanted to talk to my boss. I I guess you're working with me, though. My name's Harding. I'll be your uh, liaison, I guess, to the Black Sabres. What do you need? She just looks to, looks to Leaf, because he's a better talker. You're uh, here on behalf of uh, Rian? Yeah. Lady Nightshade. She's uh, busy with, with Yako. Alright. Well, uh, if, uh, if Yako's vouching for you, then I'm happy enough to deal with you. He's been nothing but kind to us so far. Well, I've been told that you wanted me to help you with something. I, what, what, what do you need help with? Yes. We want to get into that uh, council meeting. Okay. Um, that's not going to be easy or cheap or a lot of things. That's happening tomorrow night. Do you have yeah. any... Uh, the blueprints blueprints i think we can get 
It'll either be, look, it, I came to get you to break into Heaven's place and get you the blueprints. I got a friend that works there, should be fine. Uh, or I can smuggle you into the, the servant's quarters, but probably just one of you. And if that's the case, that the, the council's servant's quarters, but it's, you might, they tend to clear out the outer areas. So you wouldn't get into the council meeting. You just might be able to mingle afterwards. Do you have any right. sort of anything at all that can help you once you're in? Like if we can get you the blueprints, you can get in, sure, but that place is crawling with guards. Well, well yeah. I... Go ahead, Nia. What do you What do you think? Uh, we we talked about it last night about trying to find someone who needed a translator, but I think that was also scrapped from the table, if I remember correctly. I believe it was only for the after meetings that the translator was required. Mm -hmm. I suppose if we were able to get you in there to linger afterwards, you might be able to attach yourself to someone with those services. Um, but Sarah, I have a question. Of course. That thing you did to hide us, does that also hide when magic is cast? Unfortunately, I not. Uh, I can will hide. cloak yourself, but I have not a way any of hiding. Additionals. I have a, I have a way of hiding verbal and semantics, but. I, I'd have to be careful. Well, this is good. I just don't know if it'll show through your spell is the problem. You're trying to cast spells inside the council chambers? If I want to act as a translator, I need to cast something. Okay. That's, um... that's how I worked before. Oh, but also oh. where I was working before wasn't, it wasn't illegal, so. Yeah, there's, um, there's, there's a few reasons why, like, my magic doesn't fly well here. Um, if you're casting the spell I think you want to cast, it's, uh, under, no, comprehend language, yes. right? <laughs> so, in this city, and, and, well, the greater region, Karak Barakas has the same thing, uh, even sanctioned magic users cannot cast spells that would uh, take away another's work. Mending, good berry, those sorts of things. If you get caught, uh, you're done. That doesn't make any sense. Well, that's, that's people go to school for a, a decade to, to learn to speak different languages and then somebody yeah. snaps his fingers and you yeah, People it's, it's also not exactly... go to school for a decade to learn this kind of magic though. Mm -hmm. Mm, yes, you can also read one page from a book and learn a spell if you're so inclined. So it's not really a one-to-one, -one, but I do understand that there's a certain privilege with spellcasters that they just don't understand these things. So, look, um, you can either l listen to me trying to help you with the laws, or you can keep your entitlement. I don't really care. I, I'm sorry. Um... That's all right. Look, I'm the the. <laughs> I'm not in the Black Sabers for no reason. And you're going to find a lot of these stories. So just be real careful with the casting spells. Especially here. Well then, I think if I want to translate anything, it has to be in Elvish. Or, or I can speak Draconic too, but I don't think anybody's going to gonna be speaking that there. Draconic is uh, dangerous around here. The, uh, it's dangerous a, everywhere. Yeah, but the dwarves are insisting on clearing out the northern tribes. They want access to the materials. Uh, look, if you want the blueprints, I can probably get it for 100 gold crowns. Uh, me smuggling you in, that's a little bit more dangerous on my part, my friends. 400. Um, I can I can look at which regiment is, is 
uh, going to be stationed at the council chambers as well over the next couple of days. If you, it could be handy for you. Uh, if you want me to get that info, probably 100 silver marks would be fine. You decide what you want. I'll be drinking at the bar. You just come find me when you decide. If you have any All more right. questions, just come grab me. Well, Harden, before you go, uh, let me let me just ask you this. You, sh- you shoot straight. I appreciate that. I like that about you. Uh, say we get you this 500, 500 gold crowns. Uh, you get us the blueprints. You get me in. Yeah. Uh, to, to, you know, just listen to this meeting. That's all. I, I just want to hear what's going on. I'm not under the effect of some sort of gaius that is going to kill me as soon as I leave when I try to tell people about it. How, how dead am I on a scale of 1 to 10? Okay, so... Uh, talking to, to my, my buddy in, in the kitchens, the gaius only applies to those in the council meetings. It's a... Uh, they... The, the heads of, of the, the wars, they, they're fine. They can talk freely because they need to be able to talk to their subjects. But the subjects that attend with them get that cast on them so that they cannot then go out and, and spill state secrets. It's about security. Mm-hmm. Doesn't mean that they can't talk, just they can't talk outside the grounds. So you're saying inside the chambers they could talk? Yeah, they, there's special meeting rooms out back as well where you know they talk back and forth between between different uh, heads of nations and little lords and even merchant princes wanting you know a piece of the pie here in Duskfall. So there's a lot that can go on in there. They, now we're getting to a bit more of a plan. So these rooms here, that's what you're talking about. You could get us in there, one person. Yeah, well, the servants, they they serve those rooms. They bring food and wine and drinks. There's usually one standing just outside the door waiting. Uh, the the outer wall, because it's, it's, a, it's a... The building has its own defensive wall that wall has a has a anti-magic um set of rooms in it when you pass through any magic you have on you turns off once you're in though be good you can cast whatever you want well, all right <laughs> i i feel like you all come here with very little knowledge of what's going on so uh let me just <laughs> I'm happy to give you this bit of information right now, but I have something that that Miss Nightshade wants from you. This is a not a one to one. This when you work with one us, to five hundred gold by the sound of it. Yes, but she has to look uh, upstanding when she's sitting up there with the rest of the council. So, there's a bit of gold, a bit of a promise. Everyone has a reason to join. Everyone that does gets the mark, makes the promise. So, if you are going to go through with this, one of you is going to have to come with me a bit later and, uh, well, get the mark. Pardon, nothing you, big, you nothing were big. so straight. Shooting I, so straight I, until now. I, now I, I just got to know what that mark is, obviously. Pardon. Oh, it's it's nothing huge. And he just pulls his shirt aside and he's just got a little tiny black uh, circle with a, like, a cutlass looking thing, uh, thing inside it. Like, and it, it is literally like uh, half an inch in diameter. <clears throat> very small. You can get it wherever you want. It doesn't matter. It's uh, part of your link to the sabers. And once your time's up, it fades. Just, you're asking for something a bit more than what a few of us have. I mean, I just wanted a few, a few extra, a few extra crowns to help someone. And I got five years of service. But would something like our request get someone in years of service? I, that's up to, look, I, I can, now that I know what you want, I can go back and talk to 
with Lady Nightshade and find out exactly what she thinks. The, the gold crowns for the blueprints, the smoke, that's not really for me or us. A little bit is sure, but that's also to pay everyone else to keep quiet. Otherwise, there's a whole lot of murder going down around this, which is not going to keep us under that radar. So... Do we have to decide now, or can we wait till we hear for how long? I mean, it'll be easier. You got your bit pressed for time. I, I, it might be a good idea to set up a meeting tonight. I can at least make sure that by midnight I have these things for you. You just question. Yes. If one of us is to be entering into some sort of service, required service, indentured service to Lady Nightshade, would it? Would it not be simpler to sneak us in with her if she is to be a member of this council? Could I not, or one of us, not be a servant of Lady Nightshade within this council under her protection my, if we are to take work. this mark? The problem with that is, uh, look, you seem like, well, people. I, I don't know you well enough to say nice, but especially, no, never, never mind. Look, the idea is here that we just we just can't trust you yet. And the mark is a sign of trust with us. She's yeah. I, look with me. I tell told her my skill set. I told her what I was I can do, and and what I needed. And she's like she she she. I got the mark. It's fine. Mostly I do these little liaison jobs. I I, I facilitate things between people. Hmm. If we were to meet with her tonight, uh, or whoever of us is to receive this mark, would we have a chance to potentially have audience with her to discuss this? Prove our you, case. You might. It really depends how uh, angry she is with Yako uh, in, in an hour. But they, they. He look. does seem in love with her. Mm. Yeah, there's yeah. Uh, tension. I haven't even met her yet. I can feel the tension. Yeah. Look, last time I was here, they disappeared for a month into the friggin' mountains. Uh, at the time before that, they burnt down a small <clears throat> manor of someone's in, in an argument. So it's hard to understand where they're gonna sit. So if you talk to me, tell me what you need, I'll try pass it to her, dodging, throwing things in the room most likely, and I can bring it back to you. Well, I believe our basic needs are what we discussed, schematics and potentially smuggling one of us into the space. But I would not like to completely take off the table the potential of one of us accompanying Lady Nightshade as a servant. I know that our young Nia is a gifted uh, spellcrafter for language, but I am educated in language Without magic, I can serve as a translator. I do speak Dwarvish, Elvish, Sylvan, Draconic, and several other languages. Well, that makes you a little more useful. Uh, no, no offense. Look, I'm sorry I was so harsh to you before, but you know, uh, it doesn't. Don't, don't worry. Uh, so, possible smuggling, possible blueprints. If I get a meeting at, say, an hour, to, hour before sundown, so about five hours from now, we can we can sort something out. Uh, if you want to know about what regiment is stationed at the council chambers, I will need to yep. go right now to find out if they're rotating or not. Uh, that one's that one's on me. It's not really her thing. Uh, Hundred silver marks, and we'll call it good. I'll, I'll uh, get to him up front. Yeah. Cool. Yep. Yeah, okay. All right. He's uh, so just back here. Five hours. You all right with that? Mm -hmm. Certainly. Now, a blink of an eye. Do you hear? Okay. And he just sort of nods you, gets up, and uh, leaves. And you're left by yourselves in a slightly more busy tavern than when you first got here. Um. You 
Yaku has not come back in. He is well gone. He got a few hours to kill in the city. What would you like to do? He's gonna take up most of the money that we had. Well, at least I had hoped to set aside for young Bobby, but mm. uh, certainly I am able to help front some of the cost here. As I can, we did win a certain amount of gold off of Sloane's victories back in the last port. I could try to win more. There were fighting pits. Seemed curious. I was not certain if it was betting fighting pits. It seemed more judicial. But it could be worth exploring to pay for our exploits. We've got uh, five hours to top up the coffers. I think, uh, <laughs> I mean, she got us this much in 10 minutes, went through three guys. So <laughs> imagine how many, she could get an army in five hours. Sun looks kind of uncomfortable as you say that, but she's trying to like hide it. Just like, yeah. Yeah, well, we won't have the same advantages as we've had before, but. She's proven herself uh, a more than capable warrior. I would certainly let the bet ride. If you're going to the fighting pits, would it be okay if I just stayed here? I, I really don't like that kind of fighting. I'm sorry yeah. I scared you. No, 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 no. It's, it's okay. It, it's okay. Um, it's okay. I suppose as long as you don't get into trouble yourself, uh, you do not have a means of communication. I'm probably just going to keep going over Ren's journal. Well, uh, rather than leave Nia alone, uh, I don't particularly need to go. Uh, kind of fish around in my belt and grab uh, 200 gold and slide it over to Saros. Uh, and yeah, I think I think Saros kind of takes the sack and and weighs it for a second and and throws it back to you and says, "No, I, if anyone shouldn't be spotted in this city, it's probably best it's me." Uh, and then I'm I'm gonna slide another 150 over to you <laughs> and say, "You you go to the pits, Leaf." Uh, you've always been a bit better with your silver tongue, and, well, if uh, we're not going to be having any magics at hand, I think perhaps it is best I remain out of the sight of the public. I get it. Is oh, hard. Girl, that's great. Consider that a bluff call. Oh, I wanted to see this real bad. <laughs> Can I get a deception <laughs> check get from Leaf and Saros, please? Uh, deception check? Perception. Oh, perception. <laughs> one. Oh, yeah. a, <laughs> oh you have time. such a high modifier too, Jesus. Yeah. Ten. <laughs> nice tense. Yeah, I think one, uh, I, I think Oh my kind god. Of like <laughs> Both of his, you. <laughs> he's really like had his hood up a lot in the city and is trying to uh remain a lot more hidden than he has uh in most of the other cities we've been in. Um, and even like the small villages and stuff, you can you can see that he feels uncomfortable being in Duskfall. Okay. Uh, I will allow Nia to make a perception check as well. She's she's the one that's so insecure. Because <laughs> they sucked. Well, I figured Stone didn't yeah. care, and Oryx reading a book. <laughs> yeah, I would say Oryx has absolutely taken his book out and is just writing notes in it. Um, oh, that was persuasion, not perception. I'm so sorry. Uh, that would have been a negative two. So that was a nine for a negative two. So I was going to be like, what is your wisdom modifier? Holy shit. Uh, no, I can I hit, try to care what? if you want. <laughs> My dyslexia makes me change these up take, a lot. So you rolled a nine, take two to seven. Are we trying to tell yeah. Yeah. None of us see anything. None no. of us yeah, so you're all too busy <laughs> trying to hide away. Um, as you... Uh, sort of finish up your food, your drinks. It's been about an hour since you're sitting here chatting. Uh, what are you guys going to do? Are you guys going to get up and take Sloane to the fighting pits? Yeah. Who's yeah, going I think, to... Uh, Sorry, who's going with those walls? Just going to say. Uh, Oryx going to go. Mm -hmm. And leave. Okay. 
So Thanks, I figured that one out myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, as you all stand up uh, and start moving, you sort of, as you're walking past a uh, table leaf, you feel this like slight pull at your tail as someone's like reached out and just grabbed it. Just, just not like grab it, like just like pull it up the head is like, and there's a small, like a hush, like a whispers as you walk past. What the hell is that? What? The, what? what? Is it a cat? Uh, yeah, we go. I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna turn around and just see who's who pulled on my tail. There's like an eight-year-old kid there holding like two of your little hairs, looking at them, and then looking up at you and looking you in the face and like shrinking back, scared. Uh, yeah, I think he spins like claws out, uh, and then sees it's a kid, and the claws go back in, and he's like, "Oh well, my goodness, you got yourself a little souvenir there, hey." The kid just looks to his mom and then back to you. Um, what are you? I'm what happens if you don't listen to your mom enough. <laughs> what? If you disobey your parents, they're going to call the Yaga. And the Yaga comes down and turns you into whatever animal you like the most, but not in the way that you'd think. So go to bed on time, all right? The mother looks <laughs> sort of, sort of uh, worried at the start, and now it's just sort of like half smiling, like, oh, that's interesting of you to say, but oh my god, a cat man. Um, and she, she's like, honey, leave, leave, leave the, um, leave them alone. It's all right. This is uh, this is the curse I get for not listening to my parents. Leaf, I thought you kissed a witch. Oh, I I did that too as well, and like like putting my arm around slowed and kind of turning around like well, that that was a that was another time a different uh, story. Oh. All right. As you guys are moving out, you do notice now a bit more that you are getting a bunch of looks. Yeah, they're. You notice there are no other tabaxi here. Uh, you know, you know they're rare, but in other places in the world you've kind of been before, there's been like one, maybe two, if you've like looked for them. None here. You make your way back to the docks, to the fighting pits, and uh, you see that everyone lining up is holding a small uh, like piece of paper. The there's the the judge, the lawyers on one side. There's a pavilion with uh, more facing into the pit. Uh, but walking around the outside seems to be they're not dressed like the other guards you've seen. They're sort of in uh, these blue uniforms with iron tipped cudgels, and they're just sort of making sure that the fighters who every now and again sort of start yelling across to people in the opposite lines keep quiet by like you know giving them a, a firm tap with these cudgels can you see what their papers say do you want to make a perception check someone with them or are you just going to go ask someone for the paper uh, I, I might just go try and look over someone's shoulder yeah, Oric might try try and see if he can see as well. Okay. Perception checks, please, people. <laughs> it's a 13. That is not so great. Oric? 15. So, Oric, you kind of... No good, no good rolls. Look over this person's shoulder. Uh... And like you're not exactly subtle about it, you just like walk up behind them and almost like chin on shoulders, look at the piece of paper he's holding up. And the man's like, even if he got a nat twenty, he would have done that. Sorry. <laughs> um, the uh, piece of paper says on it on this one, case, and the hash uh, sixty one, and it's Stephen versus John. 
uh, fight to first blood. Uh, or Oric would uh, not really react too much other than standing up straight as he kind of resp- uh, looked to him and questioned him. Oh, I'm sorry, human. Uh, what, uh, it seems each of you have a paper for this fighting ring. Uh, me and my companions are from out of town. Is this a judicial fighting pit? Uh, or do people enter in for competition? It's it's a bit of both. You can line up here, you know, with your tag that you get from the judge for your uh, argument, case, charges, uh, settling settling small disputes and grievances. Uh, John, are you are you Stephen out. or John? Oh, <laughs> that's my question. <laughs> <laughs> so. Uh, are there civil disputes where there is not one of the parties fighting, but a uh, third party? Uh, no, but there's... Uh, you can... You can just pay uh, at the judge at the far end if you want to fight against someone specifically mm. to, to not even go to the court and settle things. Or uh, if you're just looking to... Let out some aggression. We have, well, till the fuss kicked up, uh, not a whole lot of violent crime here. Hmm. Interesting. Uh, and is this for entertainment purposes as well? Do folks watch these? Yeah, yeah. Fights? People watch. People bet. It's it's a, uh, you know, people that have a problem with someone else get to, you know, work that out. Uh, people that just have some aggression they want to get rid of can work it out and then the people that you know want to watch some some blood sport can do so without having to you know do it in an illegal manner and is there an official we should go to if we are interested in betting yeah yeah uh so either side of the judge will be a couple lawyers they can take your best they give you a slip and uh and there are uh, it's all Above the board, all legal, as you said. Yeah, and as and as you got as are talking, this line is slowly moving uh, forward. Orc, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, all above board. Excellent. Orc will nod at him uh, with what he thinks is a smile, but really it's just the smi- smallest of uh, uh, um, twist of the lip. And he'll start walking away, and then he'll kind of turn around really quickly. Question: Could you yeah. point to me in the direction of John? Um, well, he's somewhere in the opposite line. You see on the other side, there's another line where, like, the competitors sort of meet up at the ring. Uh, or you can wait till you see me get in the ring and kick the shit out of him for being an arsehole. So you believe you will be the victor? I mean, I've got about 40 pounds on the guy. Uh, Excellent. And about 20 years, so yeah. Good on you. Thank you, uh, Stephen. Good fighting. And uh, Oric will walk away. And when he gets back to uh, Leaf and Sloan, say, well, it's all legal here, the betting. Uh, I do believe uh, Sloan can enter into the competitions for without a case, without some sort of judicial uh, reason for it. I believe we can bet on Sloan, and I also believe that we should bet on my friend Stephen over there. I think that he will be giving quite the uh, beating to his opponent, John. We do not need a, uh, a piece of paper? No, but we just need to go speak with the lawyers over there and the judges. All right. Okay. So are you going to approach the the line to the lawyers on the left and there's, you know, there's someone, there's, a, there's one of the guys with the cudgel walking up and down, sort of making sure everyone's in the right line. And he's like, Contestants on the left, betters on the right. You know, and anytime someone arcs up, they just get a you know, jab in the gut with the cudgel. Get line now. Back. Shut the fuck. Back of the line. <laughs> and it's constantly around this place. Like <laughs> Alright, then. Then Sloan, I believe you should enter into this contestant line. 
uh, Leaf, shall we, to the bedding? Yeah, uh, sounds good. Uh, uh, good luck in there, Sloan. We'll uh, see you on the other side. Well, wait, wait, what do I say? Do I just tell them I want to fight? Would you like me to accompany you? Yes, please. All right. <laughs> Leaf, here is uh, 100 gold pieces uh, to put on Sloan. And here is 40 gold pieces, if you could put it on Stephen for me. Very well. Uh, 140 gold pieces <laughs> here. Add it in. So, as you're uh, waiting in the line, you start getting close to the front and you hear uh, the the guy at the front be like, "All right, I'm gonna take five more fighters for the day. That's it." So you have uh, about eight people ahead of you right now, and some of them sort of like look to each other, and you see some of them start exchanging gold and swapping to like get closer to the front of the line so they can be the ones to fight today. Uh, Oric will look for, um, will watch this as long as he can until there is kind of a, an established line and then try to find the last person um, and uh, and try to see if he can do similarly, swap some gold in for, for Sloan. Um, so he'll let them kind of do it for a moment and then jump in once it seems to start settling down okay. to the last person and then in the, the five line. Sloan will just kind of walk forward and like see them like squabbling and she'll like try and push her way into after she's like, she thinks she's counted to five, but she actually counted to six. So she's trying to get in the wrong spot in line. <laughs> so you start pushing forward and uh, this guy's like, hey, hey, what the? And, and one of the guards walks over, like raises the cudgel and counts out to five. Just walks away, like no no reason to put you in the line if you're not actually in the line. Um, so you approach this whip thin man, Auric. Mm -hmm. <sighs> Hello. Question. I see that you That's are entering. Okay. Yes. Yes. These fights. Uh, I would like to exchange some gold with you in order for my point to. Sloan, companion here, to fight, and I do think it would be worth it for you, as I advise that you immediately go over to the betting uh, line and put the gold I give you now on my companion, Sloan, here. I mean, why don't you just wait till tomorrow? Well, you see, my friend here has a lot of aggression, and she needs to get it out, and we'd prefer she to get it out here than in a tavern brawl later tonight. I just paid 10 gold to get here. Give me 20, I'll get the line. Certainly. Here's 20 gold pieces, and I advise you to put it on our go. All right. You're now fifth in line for the last fight of the day, and uh, he steps across to the other side. Uh, Leaf, you have placed bets? Yeah. Uh, so, the person in the thing is just like, uh, name. My name? Yep, name. Uh, Leaf. Uh, name person you're betting on? Uh, this one is for Steven, and I'll give him 50 gold. Yeah, write us down Steven. Yep. And uh, the rest here, which will be 400 gold on Sloan. Cool. All right. Um, that's a lot. Cool. Well, yeah, yeah. so is she. <laughs> and kind of points over <laughs> at, at, uh, at her. <laughs> Passes you a slip and then looks at the thing that... Um, right. Sloan's for... Oh, all right. Yeah. Good odds. What was that? Hold on. Nope. What was that? Unknown fighter. Last fight of the day. 
you know, weapons. Blind fight, it'd be interesting. Well, weapons? No, oh, they can use weapons? The last fights they always are. Well, oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> kind of looking over, like, Slo does Sloan have weapons on her? Yeah. She's got her coat patch. Of course she does. Okay, <laughs> okay. Word yeah. axe. And her axe sword. <laughs> My axe sword. <laughs> all right. Well, uh, all, all right. Yeah, I, I think it will be interesting uh, and quick. <laughs> so you get the slips, 400 gold, 50 gold. Um, and as, as you finish that, uh, Steven steps into the ring. <laughs> so Auric and Sloan are too busy waiting in line to um to get that, but let's uh go back to them for a second. You get to your place in line. Uh hi. Names Uh Sloan. S Sloan. All right, um, last fights of the day. You realize uh, new name, don't think you've been here before, checks the ledger. So, mm, sorry, it's been a long day. Uh, last fights of the day are against uh, the dangerous criminals. It's, uh, you know more of an execution if you don't want in just let me know no i think that's okay all right to the death weapons if yeah. you just just a gold piece um you got family that you need me to send any sort of uh effects to oh no, they're right here, and she'll point at Oric. <laughs> what are we signing uh, her up for? <laughs> <hang on. laughs> um, fine, okay. Now, we have a... Oh, yeah, no problem. Good luck. Uh, wait. I did hand over a gold. Yeah, wait in the line over there shouldn't be more than half hour okay all right so you have uh you know what i'm gonna do i'm gonna get since since uh make it saras who isn't there roll me a d20 and auric who is rolling for steven can also roll me <laughs> 20 plus two. Awesome. 20 plus two? Excellent. Yeah. Oh. Ooh. It's not looking good for Johnny boy. It's not looking good for Johnny boy. Oh, my boy. God. Oh. Oh, I was oh, man, that was, was almost be a, a nat 20. It was an execution. <laughs> so John walks in and, my cow. and Stephen is just quiet watching him. John walks in he's like, that was my fu And just... The guy grabs his finger, breaks it, and as he screams, like, head back, punches him in the throat, and the guy just goes to the ground. And just, like, big roundhouse kicks the side of the head, knocked out cold. Oh, shit. And, and Leaf, yeah. is in the, Leaf is in the stands like, God damn, I always bet where the time wizard bets. What are you doing? <laughs> <laughs> the time wizard. <laughs> um, so. As, um... The, uh, sorry, did you want to? No, no, you, going? you go. Okay. Um, as like the fighting is happening and we're waiting for this half an hour and there's like screaming and fighting and crap going on in the uh, in the pit. Um, Sloan is kind of like, you know, like playing with their hands, like picking out her nail. And um, Auric, I I have a I have a question. Question. Certainly. Yes. Um, I'm feeling a little torn, I think is the word. Um, I like to fight, but I 
didn't like to fight at in my tribe. So I'm not quite sure how to feel about this. Hmm. Well, I did detect a little bit of hesitance in you this morning, uh, or at least discomfort. Uh, are you okay? I mean, it seems we may be locked in now, but... Uh, yeah. Is this something you do not want to do anymore? I don't know. I didn't want to do it when other people were telling me to do it. But I don't mind it so much when I get to decide. But I feel like I shouldn't like to do it because I didn't like to do it before. Hmm. Well, Blowing. Roll a wisdom save. Small I'm sorry. Saves. <laughs> <laughs> no. Where is the? There it is. Oh, even worse. Uh, as you're talking to him, and you're sort of looking at the edge of the ring, and you're worrying about your hands and and talking, you start to feel just your blood pounding in your veins the heartbeat in your chest is getting stronger and louder until it's like this in your ears the whole time the splashes of blood that are against the edge of the ring seem to glow with this deep crimson light and you can just smell copper on the air You're just you just getting okay? that warm feeling in your chest of anticipation. Actually, I think I know how I feel about it now. I feel better. I feel better. This is going to be good. Hmm, well, if you're certain, but... Yes, I am. Perhaps we should talk at another time about those other feelings. Okay. Are you sure? Yes. Yes, I want to. All right, last fight of the day. We got a Sloan versus Olin. <laughs> Good luck. Thank you. Thank you for coming with me. Of course. All right. Get him! Get him! <laughs> you step up into the ring, and there is this dwarf standing opposite you. <laughs> he is massively muscled around the neck, and he has on his face scars where it looks like he's peeled back Slayer tattoos. He has Ooh. a maul in his hand that has a spike on the front and the back so that if it hits you, it's going to do damage. <laughs> All right. You can see that as he turns his head to look at the lawyer waiting for the countdown, he's got his, the guy's got his hand in the air that there's a scar going up the side of his mouth, which seems to like almost push in between his teeth with the regrown um, flesh. Mm -hmm. And with that, three, two, one. The hand comes down, the dwarf rushes forward, and we'll take a break. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I'm so ready! <laughs> oh, God. Excuse me, time to uh, popcorn. <laughs> yeah, right. Right. I'm not ready. So oh my we'll gosh. Uh, see you guys Ooh. in a couple minutes. <laughs> yeah. Don't Boy. go anywhere. <laughs>
once I'm lost again, I'm never getting out of here. Adventurer, you seem awfully lost. Maybe you should have made a map with dungeon fog. Best map making you're gonna find anywhere. B what? Thanks. This is amazing. Dungeon fog allows you to draw your own dungeons, buildings, and maps, and then populate them from a huge library of high quality assets with new assets released monthly? There's no way anyone could get lost again! Not with these amazing adventure maps that can be printed or exported to your favorite virtual tabletop. You could have that one. Don't think I need it anymore. Ah! Well, howdy. My name's Leaf. I've done some bad things in the past. And well, I don't know you quite well enough to tell you about them. What I can tell you is that I've got an eye for gold and a terrible knack for being in the wrong place at the wrong time. But hey, a bad luck streak can only last so long. Right? though everyone keeps assuming I'm a child. I guess I can be a little naive and trusting, but really it's just rude to assume. I'm a mage, or well, a mage in training, but I left that all behind. My family isn't too happy about it though. I've been trying to find my friend, Aaron. I really hope he's okay. Sloan. I was raised in the north on stories of writing and war. I grew up to be one of the greatest fighters in my tribe, but it did not feel right. I tried to tell them that I did not want to fight, but then something bad happened on my last raid. I don't remember it well, because I woke up on a riverbank. That is where I found Auric, and we have been together ever since. Hello, I am Oryx Solaris. My work takes me to the boundaries of the magical arts and beyond where others dare not tread. When contemplating the cosmos, one does not always consider adventure. But I must admit, the barbarian, the zealot, this child, and even the cat bring a certain thrill to my work. Of course, they are also excellent and immediately available test subjects for my research, naturally. My name is Saros Starweaver. 
In my time, I have snuffed out the life of more mages than I can remember. Yet, it pales in comparison to the suffering caused by the arcane arts. When fools begin to reach beyond the veil and tap into powers that mortals should not have, I will be there to collect payment. I am vengeance, guided by divine reckoning. Hey guys, welcome back to the Scales Above here on Roll for Damage. Uh, we left off with our barbarian Sloan being charged by a dwarf with a big old maul in the fighting pits. Uh, she has signed up for a execution style death match, the last one for the day. As you uh, stand there, Sloan, on the hard packed earth, a mixture of like dust and dirt thrown over old bloodstains. This dwarf is charging straight at you. Maul, as he's coming, is being swung up high to be brought straight down at you. Can I get your roll initiative, please? Yep. And I'm going to do this old uh, pen and paper style for my end. Whoops. All right. Yeah, I am too. D20. Seventeen total. Oh Jesus! All right, so he comes running in and brings that maul straight down onto your shoulder with a roll of that that number. Uh, no, he does not. Eleven plus nine is twenty. Is your AC? Oh, fine. Yep, my AC is <laughs> twenty. <laughs> I thought that had the modifier on it. <laughs> uh, yeah, it done. All right, so. <laughs> Here, uh, the mall hits you for three on ones and twos. Ooh, 18 points of damage. And because he's a former slayer, he's going to burn a smite on you as well. And to make things happen fast in the pit, everything gets doubled. So that 26 points of damage is doubling to 52. Cool, 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 cool. That's not cool. <laughs> That's not cool oh at all. Oh my god. Cool. As the, not cool. the maul Oof. with this big spiked head just slots straight down under your collarbone and it yanks it forward, trying to bring you to the floor. Can I get you to roll a strength check, please? Okay. <laughs> I might not be able to beat that one. Ah. That's ah. also the wrong dice, but I rolled it one. <laughs> <laughs> Still a one, no matter what beat it. So you start, and he tries to drag you face first onto the ground, and you sort of lean forward, and you see it as it slots out of you, and you jump back. It's your turn. Okay. Well, first, I would like to rage. <laughs> Um, and <laughs> all right, so there's that. And then I am going to, so that thing was just on my shoulder, right? And it just popped out. Yep. Um, I am going to have, so I was holding my co passion, so I'm going to grab it with my other hand and I'm going to try and swing it right down onto him, right in the same place, uh, where he got me. I'm going to try and do the same thing on him. Yep. Oh, that was so close. Uh, it was your bit, huh? Big damage, though. That's a, what's his AC? What did you roll to hit? 16? 16? Just missed. No! <laughs> oh, I All rolled right. a 12 on my damage, though. Make a second attack with your <sighs> attack. Yep. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's better. There we go. Oof. Oof. Do it. Okay. Does that include the... Yeah, it does include the raging damage. Yeah, no, that's not a crit. Rachel's She's a uh, twenty to crit. That was a nineteen. Oh, okay, I wasn't sure. Uh, so that is a total of because everything's double thirty points 30 of damage points. to him. So you hit him, and he jumps to the side, and you just shear off a portion of his delt, just straight off his body. 
and he just doesn't seem to care. This guy has is frothing at the mouth, and his eyes seem to be like leaking crimson fluid as he comes forward again, more aimed at your gut. Uh, with a uh, oh man, does twenty seven hit? Yeah. I hope you have a good cosplay for Bobby. Yeah. <laughs> and 13 totaling 27 points of damage. 26. I am so good at maths. I was like, um, excuse me, no. <laughs> I would just like to get one extra damage, please. Isn't, uh, isn't it still 13 because she's rage. raging? Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah. You are That's raging. That's right. Oh. Um, Thank you. So he pushes this thing into your gut and then oh. he's going to whip it around and use the flat smack you on the side of the head with his second attack. Man, I'm rolling real Ooh. good. Ugh, what was it? I didn't even see it. Oh, oh. 27. Oh. Uh, 16 again, going to 32 points. So hard, just, just straight 16 again. So, yeah. Okay, okay. That's I'm just convinced that you have like a, a, a mod on here or something that's making your rolls great. <laughs> this is messed that's up. That's me. <laughs> so you just you just get your bell rung and your head is swimming this massive yeah. like metal maul that just smacks you in the side of the head. You stumble mm-hmm. to the side a couple of steps, uh, but you can use momentum to get a real big swing. Yeah, that's, that, that's, that's what I'm going to do. Um... Okay. Oh. oh, that's really unfortunate. Don't so forget you can recklessly attack. That's uh, when right. You, I you, can. When you do it on your first attack, you can then do it for the rest of your turn. So you can right. do it this turn. I'll do it next time. Thank you for the reminder. But your second attack. Oh, Jesus Christ. So with with your head sort of spinning, he comes in, uh, you come in oh, sort no. of like, uh, at, at he comes in like you come in a gut level for him, and he sort of uh, jumps back and then uses the half of his maul to push you further around, and then he's going to try to smack you in the lower back with this uh this maul. Lord Almighty. Uh, roll. Man, my rolls are so good on more. I think I accidentally <laughs> did the kill. Rigged. It's fixed. It's fixed. <laughs> uh, for twenty, so eleven points of damage. Uh, and he is going to, while he's there, while it's sort of stuck in your back, he's going to kick out one of your legs and then try to like lift you with it. So he's just grinding this spike deeper into the meat of your back. Uh, so can I get you? <laughs> Shelby over there is just dying. <laughs> I know. Uh, can I get you? We'll just make oh, it I'm straight, dying. Straight opposed strength check is what we're going to do here. Okay. Just for, for quick sake. I didn't even realize I needed that entire time. You get advantage because you're raging. Yes, 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 thank you. Quink, quink. Quink. Oh, cool. Why would you give me the advantage? I want it. You don't need advantage. Let me roll it. Oh, because I've got the wrong button. I'm a dumb. It's okay. So, you drag down. You can take one point of damage. This thing, like, grinds into you. I can hear the sound of your flesh just tear a little bit. And he sort of tries to push you. So you are, I'm gonna, you're counted as prone, but you're technically on your knees. Uh, it's your turn though. All right. You um, also have been given a plus one bonus to your attacks for this this combat. I have, for any particular reason. Because the chat loves you. Aw, thanks chat. <laughs> you're the best. Um, I have to, yes that there's that <laughs> but there's something that I really want to do but I don't know if it's time for it yet. Do you know what I'm talking about? Because I don't want to spoil do. it. Yeah. All right. Uh, Maybe give it another round and see how you're feeling then. All right. All right. All right. All right. All right. So I'm going to recklessly attack this time. Yep. Remember you have a hero some point too. Freaking hits. So you hit your little, there's a little advantage button you can hit as well, but roll it again because that would have missed. So advantage. There we oh, go. No. Oh, there we that's, go. That's oh, that's like 27 yes. points of damage. No, 27, uh, 20, uh, then 24, which doubles to Doubled. 48. Mm. 
Ooh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we're coming back. <laughs> so, uh, right. so you... that just gets a nice, like, a nice slice out of him. Do you want me to flavor this a little bit? Yes, please. <laughs> you, he's you on your knees and you sort of grunt and stand up, and you can feel the tattoo of the, the paint on your face, like getting warm. That that is being louder and louder, and you just as you turn, his his weapon falls out of you. You grab it, pull it aside, and just one handed lift up your kopesh, spin it around, and just drive it down through his Hell chest. Yeah. Pinning him to the ground, killing him instantly. <laughs> oh, Don't fuck with Sloan. <laughs> uh, that was the, my first attack, right? Yeah, if you wanna, if you wanna decapitate him with his own maul for your second yeah, attack, I do. go for it. Yeah, I do. Very much so. Nope. I mean, you can. You've got advantage, so hopefully yep. you actually hit. There we go. Dirty twenty. Yeah. So you sit there, and with the like fucking scream of rage you spin around and you just hit in the side you see the the spike enter his temple and there's this wrenching sound as the head is torn off and stays like <laughs> half caved in on the side of the mall you just let go of it, fling it across the arena yeah grab your blade as and I'm you kick covered him in blood <laughs> covered <laughs> i have 17 hp right now <laughs> out of well, 133 in the and like Sloan pins him to the ground and Levi's like yeah and then tears his head off and he's like ah! <laughs> <laughs> pretty much uh, I'm really glad I chose this not come see this one <laughs> so you're sitting there and as you sort of uh, sort of coming down from the rage that that heartbeat is sort of like speeds up for a bit and as you look down at your opponent vanquished it all just calms down but you feel very content like you've done the right thing here at least that's the feeling this this warmth is giving you from inside so i'll just um <clears throat> i'll pick up my kopesh and just kind of like limp to the side of um the pit just uh, kind of pause there for a second, leaning on my kopesh and just like right the side of her mouth and just look real proud of herself uh, as, as one, Orc is standing there. <laughs> one of the lawyers comes to you uh, and sort of just closes his eyes for a second and lays his hand on your shoulder and your back and you just feel the wounds start closing up uh, as you heal for 5d8. So I will do that for you. Oh, are yeah. the judges clerics? You can decide that yourself after what they have just done. Burns. 27 hit point. Thank you. So, yeah. Uh, Thank you. He just nods to you. Uh, and just waves you aside. Back in the tavern. <laughs> Uh, because we just have the unlikely pairing of <laughs> Saras and Nia just staring across the table at each other. Oh, Nia's looking through her journal. She's not paying him any attention. Hey, you're at the same table, so is Saras looking through the journal too? Uh, if he has to, she's not gonna like. I don't think he. I don't think he's looking. Yeah, he he wouldn't be he wouldn't be prying into the journal, but. What can I say? So, uh, your friend, Nia, you're looking for, mm. you've no leads on him at all. It's difficult to hunt a man uh, without a starting place. I just knew he was coming to Duskfall. His, his writings are kind of hard to understand. It's, it's, it's normal about halfway through it, it just seems like he's writing about what we've been what we've been doing for the last few years but there comes a point where it just kind of descends into rambling just saying duskfall mm -hmm. over and over and uh, she's going to turn the page to one of those rambling pages and slide it over to you 
uh, yeah, I would I would take a look at this and and, and uh, I don't know if I can make like an investigation or something of the sort. Yeah, what languages do you speak as well? Uh, I speak common, abyssal, and infernal. Okay. Uh, yeah. just, just drop that into the conversation. <laughs> no, um, there's there's some writing that you can make out um, a bit of in there, uh, and it's it's a bit hard, and it's only because it, it wouldn't make sense to someone uh, unless they've like naturally learnt these languages. Comprehend language kind of fails. As it's you like you look at something it translates to that language and you look at something else translates to that language and you're always missing bits and pieces in my world because silly spells. Um, but you who can sort of see it all like going, huh, interesting. As some of the rambling is in a mix of infernal and abyssal and almost like a language kind of would predate both. So make an investigation check to see if you can piece this all together. I wish I could make... Could I make an insight check, I would argue, because I'm trying to gain insight into his mind of how he is You writing. can make both. Okay. Well, let's make the investigation and get the one out of the way. So that's five. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And we'll make the insight. Oh, there's and the one. There's, there's the, the one. one. Oh there's God. the one. <laughs> I think I'm three out of four happening? rolls. I've critically yeah. failed. <laughs> I, I'm gonna use my hero point. I'm gonna. I'm. I'm. I want some insight. Oh my god! 14, if that was a two, I was at going. Least. <laughs> at least. So, um, the waste of my hero point, but I'd screw it. The. <laughs> it's very hard to to figure out all of these rambling say over like over each other and all everywhere but uh there's a symbol which doesn't really mean anything but the closest translation would be the word nose as in k-n-o-w-s uh and it's always preceded by the word duskfall duskfall nose other parts say uh the darkness something in um and and then there's references to the summoning, but you're not sure. Your friend was playing with some dark magics here, Nia. I... Uh, Sorry, I'm just getting this written down. Oh, sorry. Uh, was he uh, magically inclined like yourself? You said he was your bodyguard. No. I Actually, as far as I I could tell, I didn't think he really understood much about magic. He was really, really strong, but he didn't really know much about magic. I I, I can't imagine him getting into something, something dark. I <laughs> fear maybe that it is not him who has run away, but perhaps something along with him or inside of him. He, he speaks the language of fiends here. I, he he I... talks of a summoning. He says that Duskfall knows of something. Uh, it, this is, this is, it's, it's not the work of a madman per se, but it is the work of one who is touched by a darkness of kind. Your insight check will tell you that you can almost feel the fear of what he's talking about. There is um, one more line which you can only half translate. Uh, the blood of the sister. Yeah. Does, does he have a sister? that you know of, Nia? Um, I don't think so, no. He doesn't talk much about his family, but as far as I know, he doesn't have any siblings. I don't even think he has that much of a close relationship with his parents. So if he does have one, I don't think he'd know. He, he's been on his own for a while. 
he, sp he speaks of uh, the blood of a sister. He speaks of a summoning. He speaks of darkness and duskfall. Uh, well, I cannot put all the pieces together, but there is a foreboding in this. Uh, Maybe he's talking about his dream. If he I could is never here, really. I could never get out get get out of him what exactly he was dreaming about. I could only get bits and pieces. He always seemed really shaken. And that's not like him. I've never seen him scared of anything. Hmm. Well, he is clearly frightened of whatever it is he's writing in this journal, young one. If he is here, he have... is likely to be under the watch of the slayers or the magisters. Uh, if he has have... not avoided detection. I have to find him quickly then. We'll uh, spend some time scouting around if we can. Okay. This is alarming for the sake of the city's safety as well as your own. I, it's like she's trying to like parse all of this information. I just can't. I can't imagine him getting into something dark. I can't. That's not. That's There's so one, unlike him. There's one thing I've learned in my time, Nia. It's that the darkness fiends have a way of creeping in to the minds of those who do not want them there. Then he can be saved from it. Certainly. There is coming back from fiends. Not everything must be absolute justice, as they say. Uh, and he kind of pats the meteor by the side. She looks slightly disturbed at that. That meteor still freaks her out. <laughs> All right. So, sorry, do you have something else you want to say, Nia? No, no, no. You're good. Uh, as Sloan, Auric, and Leaf approach the uh, leaky barrel, you see Harding coming in the opposite direction. Uh, hi. Ed. We all going back in? Are they in there? They should be. Uh, I sure hope so. All right, let's uh, let's, let's let's get this done. And he walks in and uh, takes a seat right next to Saros. Yeah, I think seeing them come in, I would I would close the journal and, and slide it back to Nia and just say, well, we can keep this between us for now as we deal with more pressing matters, but let us return to this before we leave. Uh, all right, well, uh, firstly, I got some info on, on who's guarding the council. Uh, they're they're, they're uh, spellcasters of second mark. Uh, I don't... Do, where are you from? Oh, guys, and like Etredale, Chiron, Corvosa, where, where do you guys all come from? Uh, I can tell the way from the north, Motor Motorheim. From one of the southern villages on the continent. Okay. So uh, roll me a uh, Arcana. You make it, mm, you'll make it Arcana. Um, Saros. Oh, it was almost yeah, a 20, but instead it was a five. <laughs> <laughs> Magic it number nine. tonight, man. And I'll let, I'll let Auric do the same thing because he's fairly well versed with the arcane. This is, they're looking at a grading system for magic in this area. Jesus. Wow. What is 13 <laughs> is your go. modifier? Holy crap. So, the time was it? <laughs> <laughs> they they have uh in this this place they they measure casters by marks where a level of, you know first mark being like cantrips and stuff like that second mark is of like one through one two and it goes up and up and up until you get to fifth mark which is their highest which is ninth level spells so these guys being second mark they're like level three and four spells they're they're middle and but still powerful um uh, the they're they're called the flash brutes. They're they're all tra uh, transmuters. Is is the uh, 
magical way of saying it. Fast, strong, and they are well trained. So if you do get in a fight with them, be very, very careful. Do you know how many of them there are? Uh, usually a set of eight will be inside the council walls and there'll be uh, some based in the barracks. Uh, usual, usually like within a minute, but if they're the flash brutes there, they can move maybe 10 to 15 seconds to get there for them. Mm. Transmutation would allow them to potentially increase their abilities to find us quickly. I've seen them move 100 feet in like three or four seconds. Mm. Very, very fast. And if they hit you at that speed, you're not getting up for a while. So, well, that's that. Um, look, I've got permission to get the uh, uh, the promise on one of you. There's a small house nearby, basement set up. I just need one of you to, I guess, join the Black Sabres. Do we have the terms for that? Length of service and what yes. we're getting for it. Uh, she has, uh, uh, I argued her down from, from a decade to five years. However, uh, she said that there is some specific things that she might ask of you and on completion, she'll knock a year off each of them. And this is for schematics, safe passage, and what of our last request for potential and that one Lady she's Asher. not gonna budge on uh if you were gonna take a lifetime service that's another thing uh but i figured that's not something you'd want especially since some of you are gonna live for a while but you will have with this one five years in our in our uh business shall we say we have a lot of people in a lot of places and you can show the mark and you can get information and help almost anywhere. Well, he, Oric looks to everyone with somewhat of a blank face um, at the mention of five years. Well, it's no time at all. No Do time? That is a very long time. Well, uh, here's where I stand on it. You telling me all of these things, I, I got a bit of a feeling that maybe we could steal those things for ourselves, but I think maybe five years of vague service uh, with a few perks along with the mark might be better than us uh, trying to break into that wizard's tower ourselves and ended up in those fighting pits. Uh, yeah, we won't well. all fare as well in there as you do, Sloan, I don't think especially since I've already got what you need in a safe location uh, that I'm not going to disclose now that you've said that. So um, I can, we can have what you need. Uh, I do know what one of the jobs is that'll knock a year off, but I have been told not to tell you until you, one of you signs on. Now, uh, some of you, and he looks towards Nia, I don't believe have the disposition or stomach for this kind of work. Uh, it just nods. <laughs> others maybe can do this quite easily. Uh, looking towards Friends. Sloan. Uh, I saw you. I, I was going about my business. I saw you in the pits. Good work. Um, Thank you. Well, if there is to be fighting, should I do it? Well, uh, here, here's the thing. I think we can get you into the... Look, I can either... If you need all of you smuggled in to the council chambers, well, not the chambers, but the building itself, I can get you all in. But you're gonna be noticed if you're all moving together. I've got a way to get you all in as servants. Most of you will be waiting in the kitchens. One of you will have a bit more free movement. Tomorrow night, if you're good with this, is when they're meeting. But you can get in ready whenever you want, provided one of you agrees to this. 
Well. Leaf, didn't you show say you were interested last night? I'll uh I'll I'll take the mark. Excellent. Are you sure? Yeah. You uh, <laughs> he you he was saying, you know, lifetime of servitude, five years of servitude. <laughs> Who knows? I, I could only have a couple hours left anyway, so I, I don't think they're going to get the bang for their buck they think they're getting. But you could lose more arms. Well, um. Well, only one more. For a couple Wait, extra years, sure? they might be able to get you a new one. As they kind I'm, of look uh, to hurting. <laughs> is that something you need? I have friends that can. They're not. They're not in Duskfall. Well, and he kind of looks out the window. We're not the center of trade we used to be. We're, we're building together again. But I know some people that can possibly uh, fit you with something a bit. It'll hurt when it goes on, but it'll be good once it's fitted. Most of the good things tend to hurt, don't they? Uh, well, a mechanical I'll... arm is kind of uh, gonna be useful. It's just mechanical that arm. Well, fuck, they have hell to... yeah! I, I mean, obviously, <laughs> I want that. Robot cat. Robot cat. <laughs> <laughs> I am have just to waiting. Magically, uh, <laughs> seal it to you. Uh, they they tend to do that by sort of searing it to your flesh and nerves, it is going to be painful. Yeah, I mean, obviously the people making mechanical arms are going to be real psychos about that stuff. Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm all right with that. Uh, let's, okay, but one problem at a time. If you can't get me that arm right now, we don't need to talk about it. But I'm, I'm coming for that if I'm taking that mark, you know, consider that, yeah. you know, I'll, I'll take another Understood. couple of years for a new arm, but uh, one problem at a time. Let's get me marked up and uh, get us in that tower. Okay. Uh, look, just so I get this planned ahead of time, you all are going to, you all want to be smuggled in, ready, but only, or, or is it just one of you? It just, just depends on what resources I have to play with. I mean, it seems better that right we're nearby. It's best that we're all together. So, they've only got a bunch don't... of Mark II mages, uh, yeah. worse comes to worse. We don't seem to fare very well when we're separated. Well, yeah. Uh, well, so four, four of you in the kitchens. I can get the serving uniforms done in a couple hours and you'd be good with that. I hope one of you knows how to cook. Uh, or at least serve wine. Like, just pour in the glass and hand it off. It's fine. It's, uh, they, uh, my friend will be there to, to guide you through and make sure you don't fuck it up too bad. Uh, why do I get the feeling that you, uh, Master Leaf, are the uh, sneakier one here, large cat man? Well, uh, I, I guess the fact that you turned to me first, I'll take that as a compliment. Uh, I, I, I can sneak when I need to. Right. Uh, the schematics, which I've already had a look at, and I will get to you, and we give you the mark, uh, show that the dome of the council chambers has rafters and is uh, fairly shadowed, we expect, given the architecture. If we get you in tonight to wait overnight, you can all wait in the, in the, uh, the basements until moving up into the kitchens, because that place will be locked down af after, after hours. But you might be able to get in and get into those rafters if that's what you want. You'll be stuck up there for 24 hours, but provided you are good at what you do, that might be fine. Otherwise, just act as a servant. I, I mean, I wouldn't send the cat as a servant. He's gone to draw attention. But for this part of the job, it might be useful. Yeah, I'll, uh, I'll, I'll take the... I'll take the rafters. Why not? Uh, give me some time to mull over what I'm going to do with my shiny new arm. All right. Uh, do you need any any help with this? Uh, we have awarded... Oh, no, that won't. Uh, any of you alchemists? What no? is that? Uh, I've dabbled over the years to keep some things together. Uh, I'm just thinking that he might need a way to 
stick to walls a little bit. Oh, well, what about these? And uh, put out the claws. I do have a 20 foot climb speed. All right, he's like, oh, oh uh, look, I've not seen your kind much before. Uh, that is horrifying. Um, <laughs> sure, okay, that'll 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 work. Well, uh, you guys can all enjoy your dinner. We'll be back in 20, 30 minutes, and and we'll uh, get you off to the council chambers. And he sort of gets up, Master Leaf, if you'll follow me. Uh, all right. Well, uh, see y'all on the other side, I suppose. Be careful. Look. And, uh, all right. Yeah. So as you walk out, you led down the street to what looks to be a fairly just boring abandoned warehouse, and you move into it, and you he goes and, like, opens his hatch in the floor, and there's probably in the first level of this, like, basement about a hundred guys just sort of sitting there um and they're sort of just crafting things they're brewing things it's just it's just this little criminal organization's base one of them they've got a few across the city you'd expect given how much they say they have a network but they go down to a lower level uh and there's a ring on the floor of i guess big runic circle and there are five people standing in sort of these uh there's a there's a pattern on the floor with like around the big ring there's five other small circles that will connect to the larger pattern and there's five people standing in them and he's like well uh this is where you're gonna get yourself tied to the to the black sabers so this, this, is, this uh, isn't just your regular old tattoo, after all, is it? I mean, it, it, it it's not it's not a tattoo, so to speak. It's it's a magical mark, just name where you want it. And this will more or less put you under the command of uh, the Lady Nightshade. It's a modification of a spell called the Gius. A Gius. Uh, it's more or less she's going to be able to tell you to do something and if she invokes the mark you are bound to do it uh well i kind of figured that might be something that i was getting myself into uh well all right you, you said i could get it wherever i want yeah usually you want it somewhere you can show people at a moment's notice so you can get into you know talking to other sabers around the place but also, not like the center of your forehead. Right. Uh, he dropped his pants. I knew it! <laughs> uh, I don't... Where do you want the mark? It's also got fur. <laughs> yeah. Uh, right there on lefty will do. And uh, turns around. <laughs> oh, the okay. Arm on hip. <laughs> on... On, on the little white spot that's a like birthmark all right yeah yeah okay actually it was a, a, a red hot arrow went in there at one point <laughs> in my life so it's a bit of a sore spot for me in general uh okay sore spot good good one um yep stand stand in the circle i'll get the uh the caster don't worry this whole place is warded nothing can see in or out you're safe here oh uh, i don't mind <laughs> And you can close a window though; it's a bit drafty. <laughs> we're we're in a, we're in a base, no, Look, it's fine. Uh, all you have to say while they're casting is, "I promise to do the bidding of Lady Rianne Nightshade." That's it. Simple. All right. Can you do that? I can do that. Okay. So this. Uh, Tiefling comes walking down the stairs to the basement. He sort of looks up at you, opens a book, flips to a page, and starts muttering quietly to himself. And you see the lines on the floor start glowing in different colors. It's just this kaleidoscope of colors that sort of 
moves up and binds around you, like flowing over your skin until eventually forming on your left ass cheek to <laughs> uh it, it it's it hurts a little bit it's a little like a little searing feeling as it sort of marks your skin but what you notice is uh as this is happening as the brightness is fading you see the five people that were standing in the circles drop to the floor one after the other lifeless Oh, all right. It's a. Uh, it looks at the cheek. Yeah, yeah, it's done. Um. That that's it. It was not a big thing. It's just you had to I had to get you here willingly to do it. Uh, what well, what about them? Uh, they will be. Their families will be compensated. Hell of a spell. Oh, you got a knack for leaving out details, don't you? <laughs> I. It's the only way to extend it this way. It also makes it so it can't be removed by, you know, standard curse removal spells and things like that. Well, I'll tell you, I'm looking forward to see what kind of tasks you're going to have in mind for me over the next couple of years. Uh, well, starts doing up his pants. Um, hands you the schematics. Take that and yeah, stick it in my breast pocket. Yeah. Well, I can tell you right now that the first uh, job that's going to reduce your, your your sentence, I guess, by a year, uh, there is a group being sent out to investigate whatever is happening with this cult of dragons. You'll probably hear about it in the meeting. They are heading out to uh, the, the forest in Etredale to, you know, just just put down whatever's causing problems. Let's go there. But the thing is, those elves have never really allowed us in. So we need you to organize the death of one uh, Gregor Holding. He's the leader of that that group being sent out by the time you leave duskfall he has to be dead that will put okay. the council back a month or so and and hopefully a bit more damage will be done to the elves they'll be a bit more accommodating of us approaching kill gregor holding okay you get right to it then don't you uh yeah yeah any info on where I can find them? Uh, well, we are going to organize a small problem between you and he, uh, or between someone of your choosing and he. Uh, so there is a scheduled fight in the pits. Oh. <laughs> well, that's as good as done then, isn't it? Yeah, well... He's uh, pretty tough, so just whatever you plan on sending in there, be careful. Now, if that right. doesn't work, it's up to you to get him done, however else you can. Okay. Uh, will do. Well, <laughs> I mean, I have to, don't I? And then kind of like flash him the cheek. Uh... Yep. And uh, yeah, I think when he does that, he kind of like his head twinges to the side in pain a little bit and he kind of nudges his sword and he's like, quiet, you fine, we're fine. Uh, okay. Yes, we're, yeah, we're fine. Okay, you got the schematics. Uh, yeah. Head back to the bar. Uh, it's, it's about 20 minutes to sundown. Give it an hour. Meet me uh, just off the northern entrance of the council chambers. Maybe a street back. I'll be at the corner. Find me there. We'll get you in. All right. All right. And he sort of just leads you out of this building to find your way back to the, the leaky barrel. 
so I'll Tess? yeah, I'll head back inside and meet back up with the group. Uh, kind of lay out the schematics a little. They're not. Are they huge or? No. Um, I was hoping to have it set up for you, but I don't actually have the uh, the file ready. So, oh well. It's uh, it's not too too big. It's maybe you know, yay big, uh, and then multiple layers layers so you can like pull one up and see. Um, and he on it he shows that there is a sewer entrance just inside the wall that can get you straight shot uh, to underneath the kitchens and he's got a mark showing that <clears throat> that they've dug a small tunnel that leads through to the dungeons at one point so you can choose going through the dungeons you can choose to go in through the um, kitchen and then he's got a little arrow pointing off to the side saying um, Sewers to caverns, three miles north of docks. So, if if you head down there, you can. There's once you go down the the point inside the wall, you can go kitchens, dungeons, or effectively north of the docks. And as you guys uh, go in, I'll be able to show you a bit more. But that's your way in. The council chambers is it's like a there's a there's a ring in the center of the building with rooms all the way around it, um, but you can't you'll be coming up in the in the, in the kitchens, and you have to move all the way around the to the far side of that sort of circle room to get up to the council uh, sitting area. Though with you, you can just walk up walls, I guess, because Tabaxi. So it's a bit easier for you. So you've laid this out and you can see the entrances where they go. You can see that just north of the uh, of the kitchens is a room that leads directly into the sleeping chamber for all the guards that will be guarding the place. So you guys will be real close to those guards. Those sleeping guards at night, yes. A Some room of full of sleeping mages, you say. There is now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, wake up and three people's heads are crushed in. So, no, they're a bunch of sleepy there. mages. You're all sitting in the bar. Uh, Leafy returned. What do you say to the group as you get there and unfurl this schematic? Uh, well, we got a. Uh... We got ourselves our way in, our way out, and a uh, well, little bonus, little bonus mission to keep me alive. Uh, any questions? Uh, I I don't think so. If things go sideways. It seems we can make it to the docks with ease. That is what? a assurance. What do we do when we are in there? Well, we're just keeping an ear out. We just want information right now. Uh, you know, unless you see an extremely drunk or sleeping Gregor holding, uh, then, you know, then we, we kill him. Uh, but mostly Why? just listening. Uh, that's the extra mission. That's the thing. He's got to die or I die. So <laughs> I'm, I'm choosing him. Oh. Um, okay. Right. He, well. uh, blew up an orphanage. Hmm. Oh, that's terrible. Yeah. So got to go. I wish I could justify an insight check on that. But my passive <laughs> is eight. So... <laughs> <laughs> All right, so do you guys sit here chatting or immediately head off to where you think the council chambers would be? I think Nia would at least let them know what we found in that journal. Just... Yeah. Do you like... want to do that as you're walking or do you want to sit here and chat about it? Ooh, let's walk and talk. Yeah, because we're, we're kind of pressed for time. Make yeah. a... Uh... <sighs> Make a history check with advantage there, Saros. Da -da 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 -da. Yeah, okay, cool. You know there where it is. Go. I saw that 18. Okay, um, great. The other one was a four. So. <laughs> yeah, so you know exactly where the council chambers are. They're about a 45 minute walk from where you're staying. You'll be able to get there um, roughly when he's wanting you to be there. 
So as you guys walk and talk, uh, you guys can have a chat. And you want to tell you something? So I had Sarah's look at the journal with me, Aaron's journal. And there's a few things I haven't been able to really put together. You see, uh, my ability to comprehend languages isn't perfect. It doesn't make me fluent, it just translates. So it's hard to put phrases together. And I think you said it was a mix of infernal and abyssal. Yes. Oh, I speak abyssal. Something else. He, I speak he's... infernal. I... <laughs> De- Sloane definitely gets a look from Sarah. It's like, wait, what? I couldn't tell you why. I just picked it. <laughs> <laughs> it's because one, that's one of the most fun languages to have. I mean, I guess you come from the, I don't know, demon fighting barbarian okay. culture. So. We don't have to, to justify it. It's okay. <laughs> um, well, what we were able to find, there's a few phrases that I haven't been able to pick out, and there's something weird about them. Uh, Duskfall knows, Duskfall knows, Duskfall knows something. The darkness in the summonings and the blood of a sister, the blood of the sister, sorry. The thing is, I've never known Aaron to mess around with magic or really any extra planar things. He was a fairly simple person. Not that that's a bad thing, but you know, he didn't delve into those things. That just wasn't what he was interested in. So, as Nia's hint leads us to Duskfall, and if she has any chance of finding the young lad, it is likely here that we will want to keep an eye for him and do some searching. Mm-hmm. Could, could I make a religion check on? I, I guess mostly the blood of the sister sounds pretty like a religious <laughs> rite to me. Yeah. Twenty nine. Holy shit! You have a huge religious <laughs> <laughs> expertise. Uh, <laughs> there's only one god that you know of that like explicitly has a sister and that's Bahamut whose sister is Tiamat uh yeah I guess Leaf is kind of like blood of the sis blood of the sis and then as you're continuing to walking he just stops and is staring at the ground uh your your friend wrote that he needs the blood of the sister I, I don't think it was him needing it. He just wrote the phrase, the blood of the sister. Oh, okay. Uh... It was mixed in with things that we couldn't translate. Well, I think your friend, uh, it, it must be talking crazy. Uh, I, I hope, I mean, the blood of the sister, that's, that's Tiamat. Her face goes white. At this point, Harding sort of appears at the corner coming from another angle. He like looks Hey, hey, uh got I got I got something to help you out. Everything alright? Yeah, yeah. yeah we're, we're good. Oh okay. Um Look, we've, uh, he points towards the gate where it's sort of now, uh, nighttime and you can see this tall building of white marble, uh, just stands brilliantly reflecting any sort of light coming in. And there's a few small sort of, uh, lanterns around inside the wall. You could, you could tell just because of how this, this light is playing off, almost glowing at night. Uh, the building is adorned with a thick outer wall of stone about 20 feet high. And there's a pair of guards uh, slowly walking around the perimeter of the wall. It's about 150 by 150 feet, um, this whole council area. Uh, and what he's pointing at is a huge Goliath Slayer who is 
asleep on the floor, leaning against the, like the side of the gate. And he's got a massive great maul with a big rune head. Uh, and it's just like leaning against the wall next to him. It's like, we uh, might have drugged his ale just a little bit. So he's not going to notice. Um, now I am going to cast a spell on you guys, which will help you get to the wall. I have, and he holds up like a small, like jellied, like a, like a lolly. Uh, and he's like, uh, eat this. It's got something. It's it's actually, it's, it has a transmutation ability. Uh, it'll allow you to use, well, you can jump real high and you'll be able to absorb the impact of the fall a bit better. But this should get you to the wall. As soon as you get to the top of that wall, this is cutting off. That wall will cut off any magic you've got going. But between me turning you invisible and you jumping super high, you can get up there. The rest is on you. Wait, is that also going to take off the protection that Zeros did? I didn't know anything about that, so yeah. There's uh, a problem. I don't, uh, once There's we're problem. inside, we can cast, though. Yeah, 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 of course. Can we? Uh, look, the grate is already loosened. I got my buddy on the inside. He's loosened the grate. You can drop straight in. There's going to be a box on the floor at the bottom of the ladder, all with the clothes you need. I would suggest not walking through the sewers with those clothes on, but put them in a pack or something, you'll be fine. We've also loosened the grate in the kitchen. All right, now the kitchen door is locked at night. So you've sort of stuck there. All right. However, uh, Mr. Uh, Leaf, you said you can climb walls, yeah? Yeah. Rear of the building has a balcony. You can get onto that. You should be able to get inside quite easily. All right. So, this is the plan so far. Are, are you, I, I, this is the best I could do for you. Anything, anything else is on you. Well, it's just a quick listen from here, and then we're uh, in and out. All right. Uh, good luck. Don't die or get your covers blown, I guess. Uh, cool. And he sort of sits there and he sort of uh, takes a small pouch from his pocket and he just puts his hand into it and he comes out and he just squeezes, mutters something to himself and he just like, as he opens his hand, like this sort of like wisp of smoke comes out and you watch as each person next to you just poof, invisible. He's like, oh god, that's so draining. Okay. Um, take that thing. I don't know where you are. You still here? Yes. Oh fuck. Okay. Uh, that delay scared the shit out of me. Eat it. Go. It's gonna kick in straight away. I can't hear you moving. I'm gonna assume you're gone. I'm gonna go. All right, and he just like walks away. He has no idea where you are. You're invisible, not talking. He's like, uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's okay, he's gone. Oh, we make pop this pill. Yeah, none of you have like the ability to see invisible things, so you just kind of all invisible, hoping not to walk into each other. Um, <laughs> so yeah, uh, you have like a watermelon candy in your hand, which gives you a. Uh, uh, the jump spell. Is there one for everybody? Yep. Yeah. Okay. You you probably enjoy it, Sloane. Yeah. Ooh, candy. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, off you go. So, uh, can I just get athletics checks to see how easily you make this over the wall? Why? Why athletics? <laughs> because Not that's acrobatics? how you jump. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Mmm. <gasps> <laughs> that was real close to a one. Fourteen will do. Fourteen will do. Yep, eighteen. Twenty-three. I have How advantage. Did Auric make that. Where is where oh, oh, I I leaf. leaf? Why did I do oh, I clicked leaf leaf is... I did twenty-seven. So Auric, Auric took okay. his time. That's oh. how we <laughs> Yep. Cool. So uh you see which is slow? 
Roll 23. a 23. All mm-hmm. right. So, Leaf, you land silently on the wall. Stealthy cat man that you are. Oric sort of jumps up and there's a bit of a stumble as he gets to the top. You who is not used to these sorts of physical pursuits. Uh, and you both like become visible. And just passing between you is Sloane with a grin on her face. Just passes, doesn't land on the wall, lands on the other side on the floor. Uh, and then you just hear... <laughs> as Saros hits the wall and uh, Nia trips over him on the way there. Yeah, magics. <laughs> Hate transmutation spells. <laughs> Quiet. Are there okay. any more of those? Uh, with the assistance of the guys on top, if you want to lean down with your arms, I'll let the guys on the floor take advantage to jump this time. Please. <laughs> yep. Are they Are they going to assist us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I'm yelling, yeah. or like not yelling, but like talking assisted, but I can't see. 15 will do. 16 will also do. 5 will not do. Oh, my there you God. Go. 18 will do. So... <laughs> Um, you guys <laughs> scramble up on the wall and, and you can see that Nia has like just a small split lip. Um, but you guys are on the wall. You make a stealth check, everyone. Everyone. Stealth isn't great, but it's not terrible. Mm-hmm. It was like oh. no dice all session, then just all the dice all of a sudden. <laughs> so, 25 jesus leaf nothing under uh, 10 <laughs> Man, okay seven, i still got a 12 Ooh. so uh you sort of all drop down and auric drops and as you hit the ground you sort of collapse a little bit and the the orb that you usually have with you just ding off the grate and it's just in the dead of the night, it's just super loud for all of you. Um, I'm going to see if anyone does a detect. Let me see. Mm. Uh, <laughs> after a moment, no, no one's coming your way. You all have your jobs to do. Who's going in? Well, you know who's going into the grate. So you sort of sit there, you pry off the grate. Open it up. Sloan, Auric, Nia, Saros, all go down. Uh, do you half tighten the grate again, um, Leaf? Because you're climbing out a wall to the balcony, aren't you? Yeah, yeah. All right. Do you want to tighten uh, the grate or just leave it there? I'll I'll close it, but I, I'm not gonna like uh, I'm, I'm not gonna secure it. Yeah, what I mean is like you kind of do it, give it a couple half turns so it's loose and can be undone quickly, but it's not just like in a you know someone can't kick yeah. it and have the whole yeah. thing shift either. Yeah. Um, so it's kind of there. You get down to the bottom. It smells terrible down here, where all like the food get dropped into this like so when you just like see it moving uh, past and it's just like a sludge built up at the end. It's like long Ugh. ramp. But you guys are on the concrete next to it, where there's this chest. You can take your clothes, pack it away wherever you want. Mm-hmm. They have ones big enough for me. Magic aura. <laughs> yeah. Uh, are you doing that uh, now while you're right here? On everyone? Um, I'm casting it on myself, that's for sure. Yeah. <laughs> I think I would wait to see if anybody else also wants it. Okay. So, so we might need that magical aura. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I don't know if they're going to have one of those Slayer people in the kitchens, but... At least on Nia, perhaps. One magical wall and I have 30 days of work undone. And uh, Saros is just like grumbling to himself over this whole thing. Um, and I'm then sorry. starts yeah, casting it on the two of you. <laughs> all right. So you get all that sorted. Leaf. Uh, you start sneaking around the outside of the building. Um, I wonder if I'm going to ask producer Veg to move us to the uh, council chambers ground level just so he can sort of see what he's looking at.
and you will soon see roughly where the grate was. Now all the rest of you are down underground, but um, I think I last time I did this, I think I fucked it up. I tried to like activate it, and it dragged everyone there a bit a bit wrong. But there we go. I can see everyone moving. All right, so it's all loading. Yeah, yeah, it'll take a moment. So, and, and hopefully it goes up on on screen for the last ten minutes of this uh, session. Dark night. You can see ahead of you an archway, trees either side, a few um, braziers lit and lit, uh, sort of at the front doors. But there's no one in this courtyard right now. Hey. As you move, I'm going to move you. As you move down through the archway, you can see dead in through a window to the inside where what looks to be the usual waiting area. Okay. So you get an idea of the layout of the place. Right. As we move. Down the side, as you look up, you can start to see um, the, the roof sort of moves in at an angle to this dome. And as you slowly move around the side to the back, I'll put you there. Above you, you can see the balcony. You can also, you kind of uh, make a perception check actually. Perception? But all we can see is the darkness still. <laughs> uh, Leaf just slowly disappearing into the dark. <laughs> it's, uh, I like 15. the flickering lights. Uh, it is. So, 15. You can smell someone smoking something on the balcony. Mm. There's someone on the balcony. This place is usually locked down tight. No one in here, except for the guards. But there's someone on the balcony right now. Spoke okay. that devil weed. I'm going to, yes. uh, these like trees here, mm -hmm. can I, um, just kind of try to stay out of sight in those until to, to try to wait them out? Uh, you can try, yeah. So do you want to climb the tree or just going to wait there and see how long it takes? Uh, I, I'm just going to wait and just see if they, see if they leave. Okay. Um, half hour goes by, an hour goes by, a second person moves to the balcony, and they start chatting for a little bit, another hour goes by, you can hear someone messing around uh, just inside the wall, uh, like the faint sound of pots and pans clanging. Do you want to move anywhere? Else, or just like wait there. The whole back area uh, is a balcony, effectively. Oh, I see. Well, yeah, I was gonna say like after uh, if I if I waited there an hour, I would definitely try to walk down and yeah. just see what if there were other ways up. Yeah. Your twenty-five stealth is kind of keeping you nice and hidden right now. Okay. Okay, so I'll move you across slowly. You sort of get to here, and you can see that there's a room uh, with. A bit of light inside. You can move to the window if you want, or you can stay hidden in the trees. Uh, I will... He he told me to go up on the balcony, so I, I think I'm mm -hmm. going to try to find a blank space on the balcony somewhere that I can sneak up. Okay. So the people were uh, from where you are to the, to the left, right against that thing. So if you move up to the right, with it being so dark, maybe they won't see you. All right, I'm uh, I'm I'm impatient enough to risk that. Okay, I'm going to give them uh, make a make a athletics to no, you don't have to because you have <laughs> cat claws. Um, <laughs> I'll make you do a athletics to climb, but you're not going to fail and fall. This is more to see how much noise you make, how easy it is on this like marble building. I'm going okay, to I only got one arm too, so. Yeah, that makes sense. There is that as well. <laughs> That's a four. That's a four. That's a four. Did they just? They did just. 
I rolled a nat 20. Okay. Um, yeah. Oh, boy. So you get to the top of the balcony, and I won't I won't make the maps move. I'll just we'll theater mine this. You get to the top, and one man is facing away from you, and his head's lying a bit as he's just stretching, and he's uh, got a small pipe there. And then the other man uh, is facing him and you, as a as he brings his bottle down, he sees you, and his eyes go wide, and he tries to start talking, and he starts coughing. What do you want to do? He has seen you, and he knows you are there. I'm gonna quick draw on him. Okay. Uh, uh, yeah, I'm gonna pull out a crossbow and take a shot. Okay. Uh, make your attack roll, please. Um. Okay. So I guess I'm not hidden. I. I am going to. So I I have a feature as a ranger that if I act before them, I get advantage on my with this count as me acting before them yeah yeah they've yeah. seen you okay. but they haven't acted yet okay then i'm i'm gonna i'm gonna sharpshooter this guy with the light all right spell. cool make your attack at advantage please okay 15 that's a 19 that does 12 points down so as as he's like starts coughing uh you with your hand crossbow small quarrel hit him in the eye and it just sinks in and there's just the faintest little bit of metal sticking out as he sort of sits there and just slumps against the railing and you see him go thud on the floor and his friend sort of looks over and then runs inside you can make an action before he runs in there if you wish uh okay i'm going to uh i guess i will drop the I'll drop that crossbow because I can't reload it. Um, and I'll pull out the long sword. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to try I'm gonna to try to hit him in the head with it, uh, with the pommel and see if I can non-lethal him. Yeah, go for it. Uh, do I have I don't have Did this other guy thing. see him or just the guy who coughed? Just the guy that coughed. Alright, make your attack with the long sword. Okay, I'm gonna do it with the light crossbow because it's the same thing. Uh, because yeah, yeah, I don't yeah. have a long sword. Go for it. Oh, that's when and I needed it. Nice. You nice. really want this non-lethal, or you want a dead man? I I want it non-lethal. All right. So he's looking over, and you just smack him on the back of the head, and he goes limp about to fall, and you you you've sort of got the uh, your your claws like not not clawing at it, but like uh, catching before he falls. You could let him go and let him fall, or you could hold on to him there. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna. I, I'm going to like, like. I think the hand loosens, and then the sword. Uh, or yeah, I don't. I, I guess I drop the sword to catch him. Um, and I yeah feel that ping in my head, and my hand retightens around it, and uh, I'm gonna take him and start tying him up and gagging him. Okay. You tie him up, you gag him, you sheath your sword. Do you pick up your crossbow? Yeah, so I, I sheath the sword and as I'm sheathing it, I'm like, you're gonna get me in all sorts of trouble and uh, go get the get the crossbow. All right. The door is unlocked because these people have left it unlocked to come up here and smoke. Uh, you can get inside. As you move in, you're in a chamber staircases which descend either side and for in front of you is two doors you can if you open that door you can see that round sweeping council sitting here which is higher and it looks down into where people come to petition them for things looking up about 40 feet up is the dome and the rafters which you can climb to if you wish i will yeah I'll, I'll climb okay. up to the rafters all right you get yourself up there you're positioned and waiting everyone else is downstairs their magical stuff done so they're kind of undetectable through magical means and are you waiting like just below the kitchen area 
Yeah, I guess. Yeah. Okay. We're stuck in the kitchen area if we go in. It really yeah, yeah it's locked. Uh, you can attempt to pick the lock if you want to, or you can just. Do any of us even yeah. have the ability to pick the lock? Uh... I can try. That's the police department. And he is not here. I have ways to scout the place, like. Surprisingly divination. enough, I do not have lock picking. I could try to break the lock. We don't want to be Question. detected. DM. Yes. This is kind of a weird. So the lock, uh, I guess this is my real question. Is it like a lock with a keyhole or is it like locked with a, a bolt? Uh, it's, there's a keyhole uh, for like the outside, which you can see, mm -hmm. but on the inside is also, there's a bolt, which is right now unlocked. Okay, never mind then. My brain was going to, if it was like like a padlock, I could like wrist pocket it away, <laughs> but not in this situation. All right, never mind then. All right. We were told that like they would meet us in the kitchen, like the other. First thing in the morning, you get meet them. In, yeah, you'll meet them in the kitchen. Yeah. So we're just told to like hang out in the kitchen anyway. Yeah, yeah. yeah. But oh, yeah, right. I think we would just go up and and, and chill there and wait. Change into the servants' stuff yeah. and just wait. As time goes by, you spend the night in this area. You hear the place start to come alive in the morning. The door above you opens, and you hear anyone there? Hello? So you guys can move up when you want. Someone's waiting for you. You, Leaf, have been watching uh, as the sun rises and the light sort of fills this area. You are definitely in shadow up there. You have below you guards come in, servants start cleaning up areas, laying out food. Um, and as the day wears on, as the others will go about their business being servants for a day. Council members will start filing in towards the afternoon and we'll end the session there just before the council meeting. Before all Everything those bodies get found. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you guys have no idea what's going on there. <laughs> right, yeah. so uh, because I ran a little over time, again, because I'm terrible at this, uh, I will make this short with our favorite moments and whatnot. We'll just do a quick once around. I'll get the chat to chime in now. If you had favorite moments, you you start letting us know now about maybe each individual character. So uh, generally on the channel, what we do is we go, everyone says a favorite moment about another character, but given the time, I'm just going to randomly choose people. <laughs> uh, so what was your favorite moment tonight, Whistle? Uh, Leaf's butt tattoo. <laughs> 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 All right, Shannon. That that was gonna be mine. Was Leaf's butt tattoo. <laughs> Sean. Uh, my favorite moment was uh, um, Sloane's moment of questioning her desire for violence, and then suddenly being thrown into a fit of desire for violence. <laughs> Okay. Mike? Uh, I liked getting to see uh, Soros and Nia have a bit of a heart-to-heart -heart or mystery-solving duo together. Uh, <laughs> I think it's fun to see them do a scene together. Yeah, welcome. And uh, Asian? I really enjoyed John and Steven. <laughs> this disagreement based this cow based disagreement. I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I want to see a man get murdered over is, is a cow fight. Like, I like this justice system. Uh, yeah, and I'll explain the justice system another time. So, in the, the second part of this uh, favorite moments, I'm going to go, can I get Sean to... I'll make it... Sean and then Mike will tell me... Can I tell me your favorite moment to do with Nia specifically? With Nia? Um... So with Nia, I would say, uh, I mean, I like any moment where Nia kind of opens up about some of the stuff that's in the journal and all of that, but even more so I liked, <clears throat> I liked the way that Nia um, went just pale white, just at the mention of Tiamat being in the book from her friend. 
Okay. Mike? Uh, can I can I say my favorite moment with Shelby? Because Nia wasn't technically there, but Shelby's yeah, sure. like facial play-by-play -play of uh, <laughs> Sloane's fight. It's it really good. Just yeah. the muted horror the entire time yeah. through. Really oh, yeah. added to the... Uh, can you tell that I don't have a stomach for beatings, but I love it anyway? <laughs> All right. Whistle, uh, what was your favorite Sloan moment? Sloan just going freaking nuts. And I love seeing Sloan go into her rages and get that weird desire uh, when she's been questioning so, it so much. It makes me really curious about her. But I also just really loved how she uh, got really excited about the candy. <laughs> that was really cute. <laughs> uh, Agent, favorite Sloan moment? I love the description of the the feeling of the blood in the tattoos, mm. and especially because I can like see the tattoos on your your face, Shannon. Like, <laughs> I just I'm visually like feeling the heat on those lines and what that felt like, and I, I just thought that was a really cool description of of it. And I'm 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 so curious as to what your verb subclass is now as well, because <laughs> I'm just like my mind is like, look, is it this? Is it this? Is it well, this? Is it this? Like, I cannot wait to tell you. <laughs> show you all right shannon what is your favorite uh auric moment i really liked when we were in line for the uh uh for or going up to the fighting pits and he kind of just went up to the person and like looked over their shoulder <laughs> and was just like hi i'm gonna look at this now <laughs> i just love the 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 awkwardness but that you you portray with him you do it very well hello human Yes, exactly. <laughs> Hello, human. Uh, Mike, your favorite auric moment? Uh, yeah, I, I think any any time auric is interacting with, uh, I like. Oh, I, I think for sure him just handing me money and be like, "Bet on my friend Steven." <laughs> <laughs> I, I think it's great. Like no explanation, just bet bet on Steven. Yeah. Uh, Cool. We'll go with Shannon again. Favorite mm. leaf moment. Oh boy. It's kind of like a general thing. I just love like how quick you are with your your lines. Like your humor is just so like it fits the scene so perfectly. You always have uh always have something witty to say and it fits and it's just it's you bring this character to life in such a clear way. And it's just, it's so much fun to watch. I have a lot of fun role playing opposite Mike when it's like a character who's like, all right, we're going to take this seriously. And he says something, he's like, <laughs> yes, that's a thing. Moving on as I cast this yep. horrific spell. Yep. Uh, oh my so God. I totally knew you were going to do that. I could just <laughs> see it in your face. He's like, he's going to drop his pants. <laughs> and you could tell that that Nova was trying to like, Stop him, sort of like you gotta yeah. show this to people. Yeah. <laughs> At first, uh, I was like, "Oh, maybe I should put it somewhere that I can show people." And I was like, "Oh no, I definitely want to show people like this." Uh, whistle favorite leaf moment. Uh, I, I think I kind of got to piggyback off of Shannon. I just love the way he interacts with the world and NPCs in particular. I think he's kind of like the one that really leaves. A lot of them just kind of scratching their heads, not just because he's a cat, but I think the what he said to the little kid was, yeah. I thought, really <laughs> that's cute. Great. Yeah, that's that was really cute. Was good. <laughs> All right. Uh, Sean, favorite Saros moment? Uh, favorite Saros moment, I think, was, I mean, I, I we said it before, but I, I liked, I really liked seeing Saros talking. I kind of like seeing Saros talk to Nia anytime because it's the, I think it's like the few times that Saros is soft and nice and kind of sounds more like a father figure despite his tattooed scarred face. <laughs> <laughs> but like he takes a lot of care uh, when talking to Nia and I really enjoy watching them RP together. Okay. And Mike, favorite Saros moment? Uh, it, was, it was really quick and I hope everyone heard it, but it was uh, when Nia asked... Uh, if hanging upside down for three weeks would make blood go to your head and explode and immediately Saros is just like, no, it doesn't. 
<laughs> like, just, <laughs> unfortunately not i think it's the exact yep, unfortunately yep. not was the term yeah unfortunately yep. not, yeah. that was great i'm glad that somebody heard that good. Yeah. So yeah. Good. <laughs> yeah. i missed that didn't miss a beat <laughs> all right uh thank you everyone who showed up to watch uh thank you to all the new followers and all the interaction chat it's always great to see it to uh jump around it's it's, it's really good Thank you to Brepai for the amazing art, as always. Again, as I say this, it's a leaf on the wind. I think mm -hmm. there's a thing happening tonight. Um, and to our sponsors, Dungeon Fog and Hero Forge. They have amazing products. We have been using them tonight. Uh, I will try to showcase them a little more in the future. I'm hoping next session you'll see more of the map other than just shadow and darkness. Uh, but they, they have excellent products. You should definitely check them out. Uh, and with that, uh, we will find someone to raid. So I'll pass it across to producer Veg. Hey gang. Oh my God, I'm peeking. Hey. Sorry, new microphone. I probably just deafened the audience. Um, <laughs> very good. I am looking forward to the shenanigans of you guys breaking into the council chambers and eventually getting caught and then having to explain yourselves. Because that is the best part that you guys do. <laughs> oh, yeah. We're so good at that. We're going to murder a room full of people again. That's what we're going to oh, do. Gonna don't know if we can oh. murder these. Right. <laughs> you you <guys>. can. I can. <laughs> I don't know. I know some pretty intense spells. So. Um, so, yes, as Nova said, at the end of every stream, we pass across the love from our channel to another channel. And tonight, I think we have uh, quite a few channels to choose from. And I'm just seeing if we got any good friends on right now. And I can see somebody that I think we should be rating. His name is Tolga. He was a part of our eight hour stream. He's going to be a part of another stream coming up in the new year. Um, when the IP Spoonie crew return, should be super interesting. He's currently playing uh, The Ghost of Tsushima, uh, which is a fantastic game. Go and say hi to him. Ask him about... Uh, oh, God, what was his name? Someone the Delicious. Ahmed the Delicious. Uh, that was his character's name. It, I'm not saying something weird, trust me. Uh, ask him about <laughs> Ahmed the Delicious. It was an amazing character that was essentially a chef. Uh, ah. Yeah, it makes a lot more sense now, right? Uh and we'll see you guys on Monday night for the Humblewood game at 8 p.m. WAST. And if we don't see you then, we'll see you on Thursday night for the Academy of Xandar, 8 p.m. WAST Thursday, or the Goa game on Friday night at 6 p. 6 p.m. AWST over on Game on Australia. But that's it from us tonight. I'll get everybody to say their final goodbye, and we'll uh, go raid Tolga. Bye. -bye. Bye. Hi everybody! Thanks for coming! Goodbye, have a nice time! <laughs>